So what's been going on, man? I know we talked a little bit about everything outside, but the academy, are you a little nervous about trying to get into the police force with everything going on? So, yeah, uh, honestly, I think because for me, I wanted to go into the academy before all of this stuff started going on. I've, I've contemplated it. I've gone back and forth. I mean, I'm sure you know I I have a family and everything. I got a daughter. Yeah. And I'm, Congrats, it, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Uh, it's, it's just working on getting to the point where I was comfortable. You know, I was trying to get used to being a dad, get used to being a partner, you know, trying to figure out working and being a part of a family and everything. It's a different aspect. And I didn't want to go into the academy and everything with all that weight on my shoulders. So at first, when I was contemplating it, I mean, I had I had thought about it for about three months before I had actually filled out the application and sent it in because I knew about it for it's usually a really, how it goes, right? Yeah. So you got to kick it over a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I was thinking about it for a real long time. But uh, yeah, just getting to that point was, you know, I, I have a great partner in my life. I have a, you know, a wonderful daughter that's doing great and everything. So it was just waiting to make sure that I was comfortable and everything that was going on was really nice and that it was okay for us to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. What's it like having a family in all this? I mean, not a family, but like having a small child. Because you're, what? It's, How old is? It, she's just turned one. Um, oh wow! The thirteenth oh, of June. She's two. Holy no, cow. she just turned one, so she's really little, and that's the one thing that you know. Uh, with everything that is going on, it's just crazy to think about that we're going through all of this. And she, I, know. I, I mean, I'm still young. I'm only 22 years old. Yeah. I, got, I got a one year old. I, I get it. Everybody, you know, you know how people feel when mm. you have a kid that's young and everything. There's all that stigma around Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah I what mean, are you going to do? You got to deal with it. Yeah. But for us, it was, it was really hard. And, you know, we had our daughter and we were going through our own troubles and we were going through our own problems that we had and just, all of a sudden running into this stuff was just crazy yeah. you know i mean you don't know if you can you know if your daughter actually has like a an issue where she's my daughter needs this or i think i need to go to the hospital well yeah but if i go to the hospital it's a good opportunity that somebody there is there because of their you know their symptoms they're showing and then you symptoms, bring that home and then i'm bringing it home and it's like it's a lot harder to judge that i gotta say and i thought it was going to be easier, but with mm -hmm. this pandemic, it definitely changed things for us. Yeah, there's so many more variables now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go outside, you got to worry about what you bring back to your child, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I mean, it's so weird. The different habits that we have now that we didn't develop uh, before all of this, you know, because mm -hmm. I mean, we went to school, we have the normal things like we knew about hygiene, we knew about taking care of ourselves. Yeah, but a totally different ballgame than what uh, it is now, right? It, yeah, but now, I, you know, I work on retail and everything. I told you I do security and everything. Mm -hmm. And when I come home, I I deal with people that are not exactly the cleanliest and everything. And it's like, I come home, you know, clothes coming off mm -hmm. straight into the shower. That's exactly how it has to be, you know, because I worry about my daughter because yeah. she's building her immune system. And for people that have an immune system and are still not recovering from this very well, it's a scary I, thing. I can't even imagine having a kid that can't figure out like how to handle being that sick and everything. So it's just being safe. When you, so when you decided that you wanted to, to, like list for the academy did you i mean was your wife kind of afraid i mean she's got to be hearing everything that's going on it's kind of hard to miss everything right is she afraid that like you know what happens um yeah i it's, yeah. it's definitely because i mean she supports me all the way she mm -hmm. lets she, you know we go every decision we make we make together and it makes the situation a lot easier and we mm -hmm. both since this has been going on between, you know, the protests and everything that's going on, we talked about it. And I told her it doesn't going into this even after the fact, it doesn't change my mentality and my process and how I feel about when I want to be a police officer. I'm not nervous about going in and then figuring out I'm some Piece terrible cop. Yeah. You know? I'm not worried about them figuring that kind of stuff yeah. out because my mentality is when I wanted to do this was to as the motto goes, serve and protect. I want to protect, you know, life. That's that's what I think. I mean, mm -hmm. I deal, as a security guard, I deal with all kinds of stuff, different kinds of people, and I see what other people have to go through, and I don't want to be the person that's catching just people stealing. That's not what I want to do. I want to be able to make a difference in this community I grew up in and make it a better place for my daughter. Mm -hmm. So if anything, my feelings towards going to the academy just got stronger as I saw all this craziness. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hard time still in that now you could do everything right and still have backlash. 
or even it's just it seems not even that it seems like the gray area to work through things is more it's grown mm-hmm. right i don't know if you heard about the rayshard brooks shooting i apologize uh, if i got his name wrong but race i he um he was shot outside of wendy's oh oh okay okay, okay. I yeah his name i heard Rayshard about that brooks. i yeah. don't I'm not 100% sure if that was... It might be his name. I don't pay attention. Mm-hmm. But I heard about the whole Wendy shooting and everything. Yeah. And I didn't catch the name or every, anything like that. But yeah, it's like you, you try and do everything by the book in the way that you are trained. But if you're not used to handling situations and you're not used to talking people down or handling hostile situations, then it's it's hard. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe that that is definitely going to be an issue in trying to figure like how do you test that yeah you know coming back at it and everybody want we all we all want to find a way i mean to figure all this stuff out and get it developed but what's the process we all have to come to an understanding and talk with each other in order to get to that you know Mm -hmm. it seems like man they need to do they just need to have more serious training at the end of the day i mean the fact that a guy was able to wrestle away from two cops Come on. Yeah. They should I've heard arguments that like they should be, you know, they should be taking jujitsu classes or really just any kind of MMA class just so that they can have some groundwork to take down a guy and keep him on the ground and not have him get away. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, if you can't control the suspect, that's when shit kind of hits the fan and you know but you know like you're saying we're hitting both sides you know yeah. you got people that you know you want them to learn the training you want them to figure out how to safely which is a weird this is a weird sentence but how mm-hmm. do you safely detain somebody that's yeah. resisting arrest especially if they pull your weapon or your taser off of you what do you what do you what do you do then <laughs> how do you safely acknowledge that situation yeah. and how do you address it and how do you come about it and that's that's where it's like you know we get back and forth you you have somebody that is trained how to do it but then they do it too well Mm -hmm. and nobody you know people don't like it and then you go and you got somebody that lets somebody go or doesn't isn't able to detain somebody and you know they're not they're not trained well enough to do it and we like getting that and every every police department every place that you train is bound to be different because you do not have the same exact instructors at every single police academy you know Mm -hmm. and so it, it's just trying to find how we're going to regulate it a little bit differently, I think, is how things are going to move forward for everybody. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to try to standardize the process a little bit more across the board. Because you hear about, like, the technique um, in the Floyd case, right, where the knee was on his neck. Mm-hmm. That's been, like, outlawed in a few departments for years, and in other departments it's still kind of practice. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't seem like there's any standard mm-hmm. across the – it kind of reminds me of education, Right, because you can go to any school, and yeah, you're in the same pathway or in the same degree, but your education might be completely different than what I learned. Well, that's just talking about like locally for us in school and everything. If you just look at the different kinds of you know academics we have at all three of our neighboring schools, whatever high school you went to, you know, some people say you know one high school has better arts program, another school says you know what, but their singing program is so amazing, and it it is that same kind of aspect like you're saying. As much as we have a standard in school, everything's different, you yeah. know, and you have different teachers, you have different experiences, you go through different things, and you have your different problems as well. As you you know, your whole podcast is around growing pains and everything. Well we went to school mm. and going through everything that we went through in high school it's it's different you know it's different for me than it was for you it's different for us than it was for anybody else that went to high school and yeah. how they're handling it. yeah it's hard right because you could have you I mean i guess even if you did standardize it you're still gonna it's still it varies so much person to person that at the end of the day you really don't know i mm. mean right and it's hard to judge who i think another thing is and i've heard this brought up a few times When you're a cop, man, you see a lot of bad things on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, it's got to wear on you at some point, right? Mm -hmm. And it's got to jade your perspective a little. I'm sure it doesn't for everybody, right? I'm sure there's good cops who can compartmentalize that and Mm -hmm. go to work each day and treat it like a brand new day and it's going to be great. But some cops, I mean, you got to think it's almost like veterans, right? They get beaten down and then it jades them and then problems start to arise. So it's almost like you have to address that at some point too, right? And it doesn't seem like, I don't know. I think the whole 
defund the police thing. Maybe I just don't know enough about that movement, but it doesn't sound like that's kind of the path we should go down. Well, uh, you know, what? I was listening to one of your podcasts and you, I think you were talking with Brayden about it and it's defunding the police. Uh, like, I, I understand there are bad cops and I'm, mm-hmm. I think that is a job. You should not have bad people working there. Yeah, I, you have to go I, in for the right reasons. You you absolutely have to, you know, and but uh, where was I going with this? It's like uh, when you going into it for a good situation is definitely the mentality you need to have, but it's just not it's not what everybody's mentality is. Mm-hmm. It's not how everybody wants to develop into that situation. Some people are going in there because it's an entry level program where you have a high school diploma, a GED, and you can just go in and you can pays decent. Yeah, and you can do this wonderful thing that, like you said, pays really well. But that's that's not the mentality it used to be. And one thing that I think it was very important for me to get my family into it and everything was because you have to be able to compartmentalize and everything you Mm -hmm. have to be able to figure the difference of when i come home i don't want to bring that stuff that i have out there home to my wife to my kid that's not the mentality i want to have you know and I, i think a lot of people don't understand that and they don't see that when they go into it but yeah it's got i mean it i can only imagine it's got to be hard right because if you're coming across all this stuff all day like to be able to just flip that switch and then go home and hang out with your daughter or hang out with your kids and try to have a good time and some sort of normalcy you know what does that even look like at the end of the day right yeah because i mean at at one point you also need somebody you can share with Mm -hmm. you got to be able to not hold like uh, yeah, if you I, hold it in, it's going to be worse. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are some people that are outliers. They hold it in, they handle it well, they can address everything, but they're not okay. Mm-hmm. You're not dealing with it, you know? And I had, you know, going into it, I, I had to speak with my wife, my kid. It, obviously not speak with my kid, but my family and figure out. Yeah, put out, them into consideration, you exactly, know? Exactly, and just tell them, like, if we're going to do this, we got to go full forward and understand there's going to be some hard times for both of us and i mean she's going to have me come home and if i am the kind of person that holds it in then she's not going to hear about it all the time if Mm -hmm. i'm not the person that holds it in and i need to let it out i i have to be safe i have to be weary of like she didn't sign up for this i did yeah you know so what i think that speaks volumes that even now that you still want to be a cop i think that's cool i think that most people if they were thinking about it and they're seeing what's going on now. They're like, mm, "This is the last job yeah, I, mean, I want to. I want to go after." You know, what yeah. made you want to be a cop in the first place? Just to help your community for your daughter. Well, so it, it, I mean, even before we had our daughter and everything, I still was like, "I want to help the community." I I plan on having a family. I plan on having a, a wholesome family, be together forever, have a kid go to school where I went to school, be around this whole area and everything, and. I wanted to do that before I had my daughter, and this was the idea, but I I mean, I just turned 22, so I wasn't 21 that long ago before I had my daughter and everything, so um, the whole reason I went to the academy is because, you know, I went into the military, I was, I was in the army, and then I had a medical problem where I dislocated my knee, and then after that, I came home, and I was like, well, I still want to make a difference. I still want to do great things, and I can do that in my community. And so that's what was like, all right, what are my steps that I need to take in order to get to this position and just doing it and constantly staying motivated and looking at that kind of aspect of everything was basically where I was and why I wanted to do it. Yeah. See, that seems like the right reason to get into it. Right. Then you've got the cops. I mean, money's a motivator for anybody. Right. And cops don't make terrible money. They don't make great money either, but they make a decent living, you know, Mm -hmm. and the bar of entry, I think it's just a high school diploma, right? Um, well, or do you need a degree? You don't need a degree. Uh, there's, it depends on what you're going for and what mm-hmm. the expectations are. Um, you have the academy that you go through, obviously, which is basically a college course and everything like that. Um, you do have to have your GED or high school diploma, and uh, you have to pass a background check. There's certain aspects in every department where you have to pass it. You know, they check your imp- employment history they check your schooling history they check all that kind con- everything that has to do with anything whatever my job was whatever my schooling was whatever i've gone through they have to check it and investigate it you know and so but essentially you know you go into it and there's that's 
basically the only thing that I'm nervous about, not because I've ever done anything wrong, but, you know, one small step inside my background check to where it's like, oh, well, you know, this happened so many years ago. How come, you know, this isn't fixed by now? Mm -hmm. I I can't fix it, you know? There's nothing to change it and everything like that. Yeah, if it's in the past, what do you do? Right? Yeah, exactly. What I know you haven't gone through the academy yet, but mm -hmm. what does that look like? Um, You know, they send out the same pamphlet, I think, mm -hmm. and so you go through it and you do your qualifications. You have classrooms that you go to. You do your physical fitness training and everything, and one of the thing is is it's easy to get somebody physically fit. It's hard to keep somebody physically fit. Yeah, there are a lot of overweight people in general, but cops too. Yeah, and, the, and that's where the... When we're talking about expectations and everything, when you go into the academy, you make it straight line and the same for everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the entry level for getting into the academy is certain amount of push-ups, certain amount of sit-ups, and run a mile and a half in a certain amount of time, you know? And so we, it's, it's, so in basic training, when I was in the army and everything, you went through that same mentality. It was like, you know, you had your expectations to get in. But as I'm sure you're well aware of and anybody who knows about the military, even after you're done in basic training or AIT, whatever it be, you're still continuously training. Yeah, constantly. you're held to that standard. Where, whereas when you think about the police department, you know, they're, they're held to that standard in the academy. They get physically fit while they're in the academy. And that's why they say it's hard to consistently stay fit. Once you get out, you are basically on your own for when it comes to physical fitness. There's no know? more like PT tests or anything. It's just a one and done. It, it's not so much a one and done. You have to do it while you're in the academy and you have to exit with a certain amount and you know, you're held to a high standard and you try and stay physically fit and they want to make sure you stay physically fit once you're a police officer as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody's going to hold you accountable and I'm not a police officer and I have not finished the academy. So, yeah. you know, knowing you know, what their expectations kind of are, but... but I know from experience in the military, it's always held that way. And so I'm wondering, well, maybe it's because we're not continuing to hold them to that standard when they get out, out of the academy, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems ridiculous that a cop could be obese. Like that does not seem like it should be. I mean, if you had, you know, a 350 pound guy next to you and you're in the military right you're gonna be like what are we doing here guys come on mm -hmm. but it's the police right what is is a 350 pound person gonna chase down you know 23 year old suspect who's a buck 80 and can run a seven minute mile no you're gonna get you're gonna get left in the dust yeah i mean it seems crazy that you you would think that you would want to keep the police to a certain standard and if you kept them at that standard then you know, you're not going to have as many people fall through the cracks mm -hmm. at some point. You know what I mean? It just it always blows my mind. I've never really understood that. Yeah. And I mean, I'm I'm sure things like that are going to change because after this. Yeah. It, right. Yeah. Something's got to give. You, we have to figure out something. And I, I believe that all police academies are going to change within the next six months. You know, definitely before I go in. But the next six months are going to be a real pivotal point for us figuring it out you know you're talking about people are talking of uh, this you know defunding you know police departments Abolishing and everything them. so if if you're going to go to a state that doesn't have a police department done through the state through the city through the county whatever it may be then how are you going to regulate it what is their new expectations going to be for whomever has that task of holding people accountable for the law well you're going to run into the same problem as with whatever you decide, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have those people that are too good, too bad at their job. And we have to figure out instead of just getting rid of a program, instead of just getting rid of this entire setup that we have the police force, I think figuring it out, how we're going to fix it, how to improve it. Yeah. Yeah. The, because, um, I believe like it has to change. It does, but I'm not the person to tell you what needs to mm -hmm. change but it's obvious to see that we got to do something exactly. i mean it doesn't take a genius to figure that out it's mm -hmm. where do we go mm -hmm. and it seems like today man the consensus among some radical portion of the population is to just burn everything down and rebuild mm. which is cr i mean do you know how long it took us to get where we are now and you <laughs> want to just start over yeah. do you have any idea what that looks like? i mean if we don't Take the police for exist for instance. If we get rid of the police, you're gonna have people shooting each other in the streets. Mm. I mean, crime isn't just gonna stop. Not everyone's 
this upstanding person that's not going to rob a bank or not going to kill somebody and home invasions happen. Like all this stuff is just a part of life. It'd be great if it wasn't, but it is. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have, you know, people willing to put themselves in danger to protect others, what, I mean, what do you think life looks like Mm -hmm. at that point? That's where I don't understand the argument. But, but I see, so I I see that, Mm -hmm. you know, but, and then you look at the aspect of when you sign up initially for going into the police academy, when you get done with the police academy and you start getting assigned to wherever you're supposed to be, you don't have, not everybody has that mentality. And that's where we need to figure out, okay, is it how they're entering it? Mm -hmm. Is it their mentality when they go in that they need to adjust? And then. And then what? Once yeah. they get in, who's to say their mentality doesn't change? How are how are we going to hold people accountable to their own feelings and their own beliefs and their yeah. own ideas? Yeah, that's a good point. If you've got a good cop and he starts turning sideways, now how how do you, do you how do you catch it? Yeah, what do you do? How do you catch? How do you it? stop? Not only how do you catch it, but how do you catch it before something bad happens? Mm-hmm. Right? Because it's obvious to say, hey. This guy's got some problems after he shoots somebody in cold blood for no reason, right? Yeah, but, but before that, but what you're are you already do? sitting at that situation where they got shot, somebody yeah. got killed in cold blood, and yeah, so figuring it out is going to be definitely interesting. Yeah, are you, the training aspect? I mean, that's got to change for sure. But do you? I wonder if what they're going to model that after. I've heard that they should make it more intense, kind of like the military, you know, and make it a longer training session and you know, try to put more into it, but mm. I don't know, man, I'm, it's going to be a crazy, we'll have, we'll definitely have to talk after you go through the academy and see what it's like, but Yeah, I'm imagining they're going to do a total overhaul. I mean, just... it, and uh, the big, I mean, it's funny because my dad was in the army before me. And oh, so, really? Yeah. So he was in the army and he went through basic training as well. And, you know, hearing his stories as a kid, you know, was always like, wow, that's crazy. That's how they did it. That's how, that's how it was. And then going through it myself, I was like, that is, this, this is not what you told me it was. Yeah. This is not at all what I was expecting because I mean, I mean, I'm sure you knew me in high school, you know, going through different programs, you know, I, I trained with Marines. I trained with Navies. Yeah, I you were in the ROTC program too, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, in high school and everything. And I did that with a whole bunch of friends and everything before the program was shut down so sadly. Uh, At Eureka High, they shut it down? Yeah, so uh, our senior year, uh, I, it was our last year. So I went through all four years of the program and everything. But after I went through and my class graduated, it was no more. And or wh- why was that? Um, multiple reasons. We didn't have enough follow through. A lot of people weren't st- like being into the program. And I mean, I remember just when I started going in in freshman year, you know, we had a very small senior class that was there at that time. Mm-hmm. And as I went through in the years, I was seeing people just like in the military, not wanting to do it, not wanting to stay with it, you know, because you have to, they hold you to different standards. It's a commitment. It's it a is big a commitment, commitment because your, your free time is spent out like doing things for this program and you have to shave, you have uniform inspection, you have PT, you got to do weekly or three times a week. Sometimes we would do it. And yeah. it's, and it's holding those students accountable, we don't have a lot of follow through for it. You know, there were some of us that really did go into it. You know, we had programs over the summer where we went on a Navy base, like not on a Navy base, but on, you know, subs and Mm -hmm. different kind of boats and everything. And then, uh, you know, we had Devil Pups, which is uh, a program where you train with Marines for a certain span of time over the summer as you know, underage to minor and everything. So it's not as intense, but you get to go through those programs and everything. And it's the same aspect. If you're not into it, if you're not into the program, then you're not going to be into it when you grow up. And that's how I think ROTC really figures out what, you know, what people are actually going to go into the military. And so when we're talking about they want to hold it to a higher standard in the police academy, it is going to get rid of a lot of people that can't handle the situation and everything. But at the same time, then if you hold them to the same accountability as the military, what's, where's the difference? Mm-hmm. Yeah, then you get into a kind of gray area of militarizing the police in a way. You're looking at is, martial law. Yeah, which at that gets a little dicey instant. too. Yeah, the ROTC, man, I would look at you guys and I was like, that is so awesome. Kudos to you guys, man, because that is it takes perseverance and it takes a lot of dedication and power of will, which especially in high school, you know, kids are lazy. They've got their own problems. They've got 
whatever BS is happening in class. They've got mm-hmm. the high school drama and to <laughs> commit to getting up, doing PT, going, wearing your uniform to school, doing all these little things that add up and take a lot of time. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I mean, going through high school, it was, you know, we were the Navy nerds. We were the, you know, the Navy geeks. We were geeks. We were nerds, whatever it was. And if you weren't proud to wear that uniform and proud to stand for something other than yourself, then you basically got out after your first year because everybody does. Like, everybody makes fun of us when we're wearing our uniform. They're I like, don't get I don't get why people get shit on for wearing their uniforms. But, that happened at my college too. We have an ROTC program, mm-hmm. and it's the same kind of thing. Well, you think about it, and it's the fact that we we formed a family. We formed mm-hmm. our own little group, and we formed our own group that we get along with, and everything. They sh- ROTC, you all share the same values. Yeah. You all want to go into the military, or you have some sort of imagination of the military and how wonderful it is to you. And so we all shared that, or whether it be our family's history of going into the military, or just the idea of it. And if you're not in that group, you know, you don't really understand why it means so much to us because there, you know, there were people in high school we went with and they were totally against the military. They're like, why are we at war? You only going to go in the military because you're a violent person and all this other stuff. And it's like, that's not what it is. It's not always what it is. Yeah. Did you want to go into, I mean, well, touching on that, I mean, you almost have to form a family because you've got all this outside pressure, right? Mm -hmm. And so since you're all in it, I mean, I would imagine the bond between you guys is only comparable to actually being in the military, right? That force of pressure really brings you together. Well, I mean, even since being out of the army and everything, I have plenty of, we're only Facebook friends. We don't get like message each other weekly and figure things Mm -hmm. out, but some of them I still keep in touch with. And they know everything that's going on in my life. I catch up with them, what they're doing. And it's like, we went through that. We went through basic and understood each other and what we had to go through. And we went through that together. And that's an amazing camaraderie to have with those people. But, you know, once you get done going through basic training or AIT or whatever it is, you start getting dispersed. You have your own little job that you're meant to do in this own little part. So you got to go somewhere else, Mm -hmm. you know. And so you have you start building that camaraderie with more and more people. And I mean, when I went to basic training, it was in South Carolina. And so, you know, I knew people from, that said they were from North Carolina. They said they were from Florida. They said they were from Texas. They were from California, but the Southern area of California. And you just get this mixing pot of so many different places. And you'd think we'd all be so different because you hear about the different ways that things are in all those states. But when we all came together, we all had the same exact idea. We had the same exact purpose. And you're literally just put in a room with just people that have the same views as you. Yeah, figure it out, right? Yeah, and you just have to figure it out and learn to build as a team. And so... Yeah, that is crazy. Did you want to join? Because I know you just said that your dad was in the military. Is that kind of why you wanted to go down that path? So I guess I would say yes, but no at the same time. I mean, it's it's it was cool it was Mm. something that could be shared with my dad and everything but i wanted to go in the military because i've always had a fascination with them i always had a fascination with the army as well i mean we had a gunnery sergeant that was in charge of rotc and he'd always tell us like if you're not a marine you're not the best because he was from the marines and everything and then we had a navy captain and he came into our rotc and taught us and he was like well navy's amazing go to the navy but throughout all Ever since, I want to say seventh grade, I'd basically been training and wanting to do this. And it was always Army. It was was nothing else. And it was, like I said, that team building, that having people with the same views as you, you don't don't really get that anywhere else. I mean, you can go to school, you can go to college, and you start finding people out here in the same classes as you, but they're not having to go through the same exact situations that you have to go through, you know? Yeah, you guys aren't grinding together, you know... 24 7 you're mm-hmm. just sitting next to each other in class yeah. so yeah you're friends but it's a different level you're not, of you're not suffering and having yeah. to look at the guy next to you and just be like oh this is this sucks yeah <laughs> going through pain with somebody else really brings you together it's mm-hmm. like the same thing with like a shared loss or i mean anything like that going through something hard or traumatic or where you really have to put in a lot of effort I mean, you're bonded with that person for life now. Mm -hmm. So what was your, were you going to make a career out of it? Was that kind of your? I was going to make a career out of it. And that was the mentality and uh, hoping that it could develop into that. But um, when it didn't work out, it was kind of just like I had to accept it. 
Mm -hmm. There was nothing I could have done differently that, I mean, what happens happens. And so coming home, that's when I was like, well, I can still do this. I can still have the same mentality of serving and protecting. Can I do it in my community? And then certain things came up, you know, making a family, have my daughter getting into that life and everything. It just changes. And so I had to just basically procrastinate, postpone and everything. And you have to have that same mentality that I had in high school. I had to re-get it and regain it to actually go through wanting to go to the academy here and everything. What was the injury that took you out? Uh, it was a dislocated knee. So okay. I dislocated my knee and there was inflammation and everything. And the liquid is just so large in it and everything that they were just like, you can have surgery and then you'll basically be postponed for like, three months, four months, and then have another surgery and go back into it and try and figure it out. Or we can just let you go home. And I mean, when you're out there, you do get homesick. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to come home just as anybody else. Mm -hmm. But it was surgery after surgery was not the mentality I wanted. I wanted to take it slow, go through my physical therapy, do the exercises, gain it back naturally and not have to keep getting cut open for it. That was pretty much the reason why. Yeah, if you're beat up from the start, it's going to be a long road. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when I signed on, I signed on for a six year contract. So, oh, wow. Uh, so I'm looking at six years. So you were, you were committed. Yeah. You were like, a, this that's is... the longest you can have a contract. As, wow. as of when I entered, it was a six year contract as long as you could have. And so I was like, go for it. Go big or go home. You were committed. You yeah. were like, this is what I'm going to do. Exactly. Whoa. Yeah. And then, yeah, things happen. And honestly, I wouldn't change it, mm -hmm. you know, as much as it did it was horrible at that time. If it wasn't for me coming back home, I wouldn't have found this job. I wouldn't have gotten with my wife. I wouldn't have had my kid. And so it's definitely, it was, it was time for me to figure out something different. Yeah. I got to admit, I mean, I have to imagine that that shook you though, when that happened, right? If, especially if it was a six year contract, you were probably like, what? Yeah. What is happening? I mean, when, when everybody was talking to me and, you know, I had my first sergeant, I had my captain and everybody's like, you have a very large decision to make. You have like, but you have to make it. We can't make this decision for you. There's nothing we can do all on you. And it's like making that decision. It was like, I'm going to come home and I'm going to disappoint everybody is mm -hmm. how it felt. And then at the same time, if I stay in, I'm not doing everything I can that I wanted to, I won't be able to meet and beat those expectations I had set for myself. And it's, I'm basically just staying in for the comfort of everybody else that expected me to go ahead, go through with this, you know, and that's not a good mentality to go into and finish up a contract, you know, so it was definitely really hard to accept at first, but look at where you are now yeah i mean exactly. you gotta think sometimes things just happen for a reason right yeah and that, i mean that was the best part is coming home and then starting to realize like uh, this knocked me down but i mean that doesn't mean you i can't get, get up, up. Yeah. yeah that's what keeps a lot of people down man they get knocked down and they don't know how to get back up and then that can cripple you we talked about this in a later podcast that man when you get beat down sometimes you just stay down mm -hmm. and then what do you do 20 yeah. years pass you by yeah exactly and time goes by so much faster the older that you get man i still can't believe we're out of high school i know i've been I mean, talking to all these people and it's <laughs> like we're we've been out of high school for what four years now and, and it's like and oh you start God. hearing what everybody's been doing and everybody's getting been going through and you're just like wow crazy uh, you got a lot done it doesn't seem like that long ago yeah look at you now i talked to Haley and sh i mean Haley lamb mm. and it was crazy and impressive to hear what she's been doing man she is grinding mm -hmm. she's trying to acquire some more properties you know she's got a nice new truck that she bought herself like she's got all these things she's investing like mm -hmm. you talk to people like that and it's like man i gotta i gotta get off my butt and start putting yeah in some you're like I'm, slow, I'm going slow compared to all the rest of these people right or you know listening to jordan sanders i actually was listening yeah another to cool guy Shout yeah out to that, yeah i that was the first podcast i listened to of yours oh cool it just came out once we had started talking and everything and so i was listening to that and his mentality to be a creator and be that creative and if i don't make it there's nothing yes exactly it's like man that's that's some drive right there i i, I admired it and it was nice to listen to and hear what he had to say and how he felt about that situation it's like that's awesome yeah growing up they always or at least my parents always said you know the biggest predictor of your life is who you surround yourself with you mm -hmm. know and i was very fortunate with my friend group 
that they were all motivated. They were all driven. You know, they all wanted to do something with their lives. And so that definitely carried over into my life, you know, but just as easily I could have surrounded myself with, you know, kids that weren't going anywhere or weren't doing anything. And then that's what happens to you. You know, it's so, it's crazy to think about, you know, you feed off the energy of people that are around you. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, talking to people like you and like Jordan and Haley and all these other people, I mean, you got to think, holy crap. Yeah, like, you're like, how far have I gotten? Yeah. Like, am I really doing what I want to do? Do I have as much passion as I'm hearing about all the rest of these people? It's like, I was thinking the same thing when I was listening to what everybody was saying. And I felt I knew what I was doing. And I felt like I had accomplished what yeah. I was going through and what I wanted to do. And then, yeah, just hearing it was like, do I need to question myself? It's a good motivator. Yeah. Right? It's like, to am I doing everything yourself. that I can and everything? So. That comfort. Once comfort starts creeping up. Sometimes you got to look at your life and be like, man, I got to, I got to mix things up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of coasting right now. I can start kicking it up into a fifth gear. Mm -hmm. Was the military everything you thought it was going to be? I know you only spent a short time in there, but because I've always, I was always flirting with the idea of enlisting. I always thought that would be an amazing experience. But... I don't know. I think everybody's experience is different mm -hmm. and I feel like it is different depending on where you go. I mean, I had a lot of expectations due to the fact that I had heard stories from my father about what he had gone through. Kind of romanticized it. Was, it yeah. Bet. And it was just a little bit different. I mean, I wouldn't say it didn't meet my expectations because I had a, trem a tremendous time, you know, building camaraderie with all these folks and everything and learning different techniques, different things just to be a soldier and everything i mean it, it gets fun you start shooting different weapons and everything like that and that's pretty cool um i just don't know if i really had the right expectations mm -hmm. for it it was just a lot different than what i was expecting it wasn't that it didn't meet the expectations it was just differently and so how long have you been out now uh woo. Three and a half years, four years. Oh wow! So oh, so almost, you and, you so almost four years. You enlisted right after high school. Right after high school, uh, I basically had a month after we graduated to kind of hang out with friends, family, all that kind of stuff. And, and then adios. and then it was adios. Go to Sacramento and start getting shipped out to wherever you got to go and everything. So. People underestimate how hard it is, especially going from coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Like you get homesick and it's not the kind of homesick where it's like oh i can just drive home for the weekend it's like which you should know yeah going new york it was new york you going coast to coast and it's like hard to explain to people that haven't done it but yeah like you said it's just like it's a different ball game out of ooh. out of your home state mm -hmm. if nothing else is a different ball game yeah i mean yeah it's definitely even if you go somewhere as local as Oregon, you yeah. know, it's still it's kind of like different people, hey, different out here. Yeah, it's different than going back home. Um, yeah, but it's getting homesick was definitely a hard one at yeah. first and everything. But like I said, when you're out there, you're going, going, going. You're constantly moving and everything. So you start losing, you know, concentration on that. You're focused. which is good, right? Because yeah. then you're not man. I miss home. Yeah, but you're like man. I'm stuck here. Yeah. You know, I'm like. I got to do all this crazy stuff every single day in, day out. You don't get a break. And so you don't really get to say it's not like I'm going to do this today. It's like, no, you're doing yeah, I'm this. Gonna, yeah, it's like uh, I don't really feel like washing the floor today. And they're yeah. like, no, you're going to wash it and you're going to brush it and you're going to wash this car on top of it. And that was like our relaxing day was cleaning. And mm -hmm. you're just like, what is happening? Why? Why is it cleaning? Yeah. You, you definitely learn how to clean, but <laughs> that's something. <laughs> military best cleaners man yeah i mean always have that to fall back on i know i i, I mean even at work now they like i just mop and it's the cleanest the floor ever looks and they're like wow you're really good and i'm like i had a lot of experience i had a lot of experience i was doing it for months straight yeah. like that's all i was doing so where are you working security at uh i work in uh writing so oh okay yeah so i do all of the right aids in this area so fortuna all the way up to mckinley Bell. oh wow so there's one in fortuna they bounce you around a little bit yeah but mostly i stay in eureka because that's where it's about the worst and everything so a lot of people steal uh it's worse than the other stores oh really mm -hmm. so i mean you're looking at let's see dollar value of fifty four thousand a year Whoa. at one store and then Whoa. you know our lowest store came at like forty two thousand so it's like a ten thousand dollar difference but you can't go hands-on with people can you i mean if you see somebody stealing what do you do call the cops try and do that you know verbal judo and like yeah. we were talking with the police academy and how things might change it's like you have to be 
not so confrontational. You have to talk to somebody and be like, hey, I understand you're a human. I understand that you're doing this for a reason. Let me explain to you, it's not worth that reason because I caught you. You know, cl- the cops are going to get involved or we can figure this out together and I don't have to involve the cops. You don't have to have a problem, you know, and it's getting them into that kind of communication is where it's a little bit difficult and everything. So, but yeah, it's definitely no hands on, no aggression, no dragging people around or anything like that. Throwing I mean, them on the ground. Yeah, it's like, get back in here. And yeah, you're putting them breaking in an bottles over their head. Dragging around all over yeah. the place. So, I mean, but um, yeah. I mean, they're not going to get mad at you if you defend yourself, obviously. So. Well, yeah, if somebody's beating you up, what are you going to do? You just curl up and hope they go away? What are, mm-hmm. you, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, exactly. So That is going to be great preparation for the academy, I bet. Mm-hmm. That de-escalation and the practice in that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you said you watched some of my videos. so you, Yeah, the family vlogs. Yes. Yeah. So, you know my very first video where it's like uh, uh, something at work? work or something it's my very first video that i put out and everything so it was me talking about having to deal with you know different barriers like i don't speak sign language and this guy was deaf and it just escalated but i had to be able to de-escalate it now it didn't de-escalate how i hoped but Mm -hmm. i don't know what else to do and a guy that's coming and swinging at me and he doesn't understand what i'm saying because he doesn't hear anything you know and i feel like that was a real turning point for me where I definitely could have handled that situation differently than the way that I handled it in that moment. I'm like, there was a barrier. We weren't understanding each other and it escalated because we couldn't find a way to communicate. You know, I mean, it was pretty obvious. I'm telling him like, I'm trying to get the stuff in your Yeah, for people that haven't seen that, can you just walk through what happened? So it was, uh, there was a gentleman, he came into the store, he went and he grabbed some cans of air. So, you know, you blow off your keyboard and everything like that. So he had grabbed that. And uh, well, he went down a different aisle, stuck it inside his jacket, and then went to go walk out the door. Pretty pretty straightforward. So, you know, I'm watching him 100% watching. And so he goes outside, and I'm like, hey, can I, you know, excuse me, sir, can you talk to me real quick? And he just turns around and just kind of looks at me. And, you know, you get that look with everybody that's still, and they're like, I don't know yeah, what's they're going playing dumb. on. I didn't take anything. Yeah, so he's, he's like, has that look on his face. I'm like, look, I'm just trying to get this stuff out, out of your jacket. I wasn't doing any hand signals at the time. And he's like starting to go like this, putting his hand up to his ear and just like, I, I can't hear. He's getting that sort of like phrasing and like trying to tell me like, we're not understanding each other. And so that's when I start doing the explanation. I'm like, dude, you got that stuff in your jacket. That's mine. I want it. And I don't know sign language. So I'm just mouthing the words yeah. as best as I can, throwing my lips out there. And uh, so he ends up figuring out what, I'm trying to do and so he like starts lifting up his jacket pretending like he's gonna go ahead and grab him and give him back to me but then he like takes the cans and just pushes me and just shoves me with both the cans and I was like whoa okay so I like get on the phone I'm about ready to call 911 and I'm like starting to walk and I see him and like I'm like turning around after I get up I turn around and I go to walk I don't recognize that he just tripped over his own feet or something I don't know how he ended up on the floor but I like went to go like start jogging, figuring out where he went. But I turned around. You guys nobody... are still in the store? No, this is right outside the okay. store. So we're right outside the store and he pushes me and tries to run away. So I'm getting up out of the little awning area, like the vestibule area. And I get up and I try to run away. And we got those flowers that are right in front of the store and everything. And so as I'm panning to look over, you know, I, I like start to jog and trip over him. And so after I trip over him, it just starts getting worse. He's like got one can in each hand and he's got his hands up and he's standing like this and i'm like trying to be like dude i don't care that much i'm gonna be honest with you like it ain't that big of a deal and then he just takes it and throws one of them at me and starts charging me and i'm like oh what is happening what do i do like i know he at this point i know he can't understand what i'm saying so i'm like i don't know what to do so i'm you know, like I said, you self-defend yourself. So I put him on the ground. And luckily, there was a police officer that was off duty, but he was in the parking lot. And so he came over and he assisted me and we detained him, put him on the ground. But I was so nervous because the cop saw the altercation, but he doesn't know this man's deaf. So I'm like trying to yell at a cop, whether he's off duty or not. You're yelling at a cop and you're saying, yeah. you know, he's deaf, he's deaf. Don't don't hurt him. Like, he doesn't know what's going on. And he's like, no, 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 it's okay. Like, it's okay. And it gets back to that whole like, you just don't want to overexert yourself to detain somebody. Yep. I'm like, he honestly 
I'm trying to let you know there's a barrier and we need to accommodate for him. You know, like, even though he's stealing, even though he's swinging on me, like, we got to figure this out as much as, you know, he's doing something that's not okay. We, we can't retaliate and do something else that's not okay. Yeah. Judging that is, I mean, it's got to be the hardest part. Yeah. Especially if somebody's attacking you because it's like, first things first before you can even start thinking about the right amount of force you're just trying to protect yourself mm-hmm. right i mean well, at the end I, of the day yeah those cans are hard i got yeah. hit in the head with that thing and i was like oh what the like what is going on and yeah i mean just you, you get that adrenaline you get in that situation where you're like dude i could like i'm gonna give you my all and see how we handle it but i mean in that situation i was like I'm going to let you Just come shock, to me. like, yeah. what is happening? I was like, I'm not going to try and confront you. I'm going to, like, let you come at me if that's how this is going to go. And, I mean, at, I mean, for a little bit, I was, like, trying to get away. And I was, like, walking in circles around him. Like, I just go. Just, like, I'm sick. Not that just, big of a deal, man. Just go. I mean, it's, like, yeah. a total of 14 bucks. It's not worth my life to try and stop you for 14 bucks. If you're that adamant about getting this hair, just take it, you know. And so, uh yeah, just addressing that situation was a little bit difficult, but yeah, you got to be able to do it in order to have a security job, in order to be a police officer, in order to be in the military. So, and it's hard because you don't know. I mean, luckily in your situation, he only had the air cans, but you don't know if he's got a knife or a gun or what's going on. And mm-hmm. you meet so many people just in daily life, but especially in a security situation or a police situation where people are just lying to you to try to get out of things. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't take that. Like, this yeah. is mine. I've owned it my entire life. Like, you can't tell me it's not mine. Yeah. And it's like, well, if I don't have video evidence that you took this out of my store, how can I tell you didn't own it for the rest of your life? Are you watching cameras? Um, or you're just, like, kind of patrolling around? It could be a little bit of both. Okay. It's a little bit of both. So I can sit in an area and just watch a camera, or I'm usually on the floor trying to walk it. So it's mostly out on the floor kind of concept. Yeah. It's like an undercover kind of deal because I don't wear a uniform. So okay. I, I show up in what you're Whatever. looking at. And yeah, so. What got you into that? Um. Uh, so before that, I was doing beer distributing. And oh, so, for? Uh, what... Del Rica. Oh, I haven't heard of them. Uh, it's Del Rica Beer Distributing. It's just they do like Corona, different things. Like they're like, oh, cool. they're just a local place that yeah. delivers the big name beer out to different locations and everything. And so one of my stops was Rite Aid and the guy that had the job before me, he's like, Hey man, I'm leaving soon. I'm going to be going and doing this, this, and this. I can put in a word for you and get you the job. And I was like, the job I was doing, you know, it's merchandising. So you're either really good at merchandising or you're really bad. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was terrible at it. I forgot things left and right. I was, I, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. And so getting into the security, he was like, yeah, let me just put in a word and that's cool. It just ended up happening. Yeah, sometimes it just works out like that. Mm. How what? Yeah, I <laughs> I was just trying to think. I've had shit from just, you know, working around town. You meet a bunch of different people that are always throwing shout outs from mm. one job to another. Hey, I've got this if you're interested, you mm. know. That's kind of the cool thing about especially distributing work like that is you get to meet people mm-hmm. you know and then connections start being built and then you can go yeah kind of do start, other things you, with it you start seeing everybody you go to safeway yeah. you go to ride aids you go to you know different kind of small markets so you, they can get their beer you're going everywhere because everybody's selling beer you yeah know? beer's a hot car. especially yeah. now especially now and everything what I'm else so are you gonna lucky do but i'm not a part of that anymore because i'd forget things and be i'd crazy. negligently just be like i don't really want to do that today yeah what have you been doing to try to keep sane with everything going on just working i yeah. honestly just work and i come home and i deal you know with things at home obviously and things out in the public i still got to go grocery shopping yeah. i still got to go deal with all this kind of stuff and everything but yeah it's mostly just trying to stay out of it and stay in my own little that's corner. my biggest thing just keep i've been trying to just keep my head down do the podcast go to work do school mm-hmm. try to avoid all the other external things i think we just we just need to open up at the end of the day, man. It's, no. I mean, I'll be honest. At the start of this thing, I thought a lot of people were going to die. Not to say that, you know, I don't want to belittle. Well, they made it happened. that way. Yeah. Yeah. I made it that way. And I just heard the other day that, because at the beginning, right, they said that masks weren't important. And then like three days later, they said, yeah, everyone needs a mask. Mm. I re- was reading an article and I can't remember where it's from. So it might be fake but it seemed legit that the reason they said oh yeah masks don't do anything is because they knew they didn't have enough masks 
to supply doctors and stuff, and mm-hmm. they didn't want people going out and buying all the masks. Mm-hmm. And then three days later, they were like, well, we're screwed anyway. So, we, which now, how do you trust the government, right? Mm-hmm. If they're going to lie to you Who's about... Who's going to tell you the truth? Because yeah. they were just holding it back in order for us to not over Yeah, why not just be honest? Because kind of yeah. now when they say something, now you have to be like, what what's going on here? Mm. Are we is this legit? Are yeah, we, like are you giving me like facts or can I like go just check these spoon facts? Feeding or, like, me to yeah. keep me away from what's going on. That's the and like we were talking about with all the news and stuff. There's so much misinformation. There's so many headlines of clickbait that's not even true. And how do you decipher that? How do you mm-hmm. get to what's real and what's not? Yeah, and getting to that is just difficult. I've heard arguments that. They want to make a digital literacy class at universities and stuff now. For what? I have no idea what it entails. I think my understanding of it is that it's going to teach people how to safely, like, surf the web and how to not fall for clickbait and how to. So not... it's kind of like how your teacher tell you not to use Wikipedia for all your yeah, which should just be basic information at this point, right? Well, if you're I, so I remember going through school and you start talking about those different programs that you use, you know, dot org, okay, dot gov, the okay, dot whatever com probably not yeah you know? and it's like i don't remember it off the top of my head but we went through that class yeah. and i know that that was taught to us i only i mean dot coms basically make up 90 percent of what i'm looking at right mm-hmm. well i mean maybe a dot org every now and then but i can only name dot com and dot org i don't and there's like a ton of different dot, dot what, edu yeah. for oh, yeah, education right? and school and everything like, like that and who's really looking at that when they're reading an article you or, just fall upon it on accident yeah. it's just like oh what's this and you read it and you're like is this true I, it's on the internet so it must be right hundred thousand people are dying right now and then you click on it and it's like oh this is fake yeah. okay well what do you mm. what do you do yeah i think our generation thankfully since we kind of caught the back end of technology you know right as we were coming up mm. i think we lucked out in that we can kind of wade through it a little bit better than the generation below us and above us mm-hmm. but I don't, I don't know what you do i don't know how you handle that i don't know how it's, that gets solved it's definitely a mystery i don't know if you can time out real quick yeah okay cool i just gotta go to the bathroom oh yeah, bathroom. yeah welcome back to <laughs> we're back guys and sorry about that uh well yeah i know we moved the chair and everything and now i'm like all right huh, Dude, it's all good it's so not formal that's my biggest thing with this is i don't want it to be like well i think that's the best part about this and i was kinda, oh, yeah. i was so in like when you said that and you were like dude i got this podcast i was like yeah i just saw it and i'm like super excited yeah <laughs> i'm about to go watch it i I'm started watching honest. your vlogs man and i was like dude i gotta i gotta reach out for sure yeah i think and, anybody that's doing something you gotta bring mm-hmm. them on and talk because especially your videos dude i like those mm-hmm. are you gonna do I know we talked a little bit about yeah, it. Yeah, we kind of talked about, about it a in? little bit. So um, I super love the vlog and everything like that. I love doing it. I love it's fun, it. right? Yeah, and so, I mean, the video editing is so easy for me. I mean, I, and I love to do it, and I love videotaping. It's a great way to, like, keep things about my daughter, you know, being able to time, like, show those timelines and everything. That'll I mean, be cool for her to look back at them. I look at the videos just that I've been doing, and it's like I look at my daughter when she was first in because I started doing the vlog shortly after she was born. I didn't do it before or anything like that. I was shortly after she was born i started doing that and one of the big motivators for doing it was the fact that you know i want to be able to always be able to look back just like a photo and see like my daughter at that age and what she yeah. was doing and what hardships i went through so when she gets older and she has kids of her own which hopefully never but <laughs> but well you know when she starts making a family start doing what she wants to do yeah. and everything she'll be like wow my dad was like feeling the same way i am you know he's going through the same stuff i feel he feels the same way and i feel like that would be very helpful for her and i hope it is and i get to look back at it and be like i have grown a lot i'm a lot different than when i first started this mm-hmm. and everything and so I, I love the idea of it you know seeing that growth dude that's one of the best that's one of the best parts i've noticed even with this from the first one to this one mm-hmm. like you're constantly changing and just having like a spot where you can go and see that change is really i think it's important yeah and i mean I'm sure you can tell based off my videos. You know, my first video is like getting done in my car. It's mm-hmm. just me and I'm talking on the phone and I'm just ranting. And, you know, that, that video ended up, you know, it, it didn't skyrocket, but, but it was still, doing yeah, it great. A it has of views. a ton of views and everything. And so um, 
after that video, it's just like, okay, everybody's, I'm here for entertainment. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. So well, let me show you guys what I find entertaining, what I like doing, what I like talking about, how I feel about certain situations. And that's why when you made this podcast and you made it accessible on YouTube and everything like that, I was like, dude, this is amazing. Of course yeah. I'll be on there. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no problem. But that growth and everything was just lovely to see because yeah. you start watching my videos and you progress all the way to the last one I made. Now you can see the difference. Yeah, it's night and day different. Yeah. And you've got a few more cooking, you were saying. So, yeah, I was listening to your, on my way here. I was listening to the podcast between you and Brayden. Mm. And I was listening about his whole streaming thing. And um, yeah, Twitch, man, those things are blowing up now, Twi too. Twitch, I heard, was doing, yeah, and listening to what Brayden had to say and everything about Twitch, I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. But I loved gaming. I mean, I watch different gamers on YouTube specifically. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So. I mean, we put in the money to get all these different things coming out for that. So I have basically everything set up except for like a laptop charger and a camera adapter to the laptop. So I can use both our laptops at home to be able to record all this stuff. And so the whole concept was like hopefully to do gaming. And, you know, I don't play very many games. I still only have 2K19. I don't do 2K20 or anything like that. Yeah. I got an Xbox One. It's old generation. Like, when they first came out, I bought it. And so it, it's more for, like, entertainment and to get see what people think about it. And then if it grows into something, then I'll be like, yeah, I want to do gaming. Or I'm like, all right, I'll do a little bit of gaming maybe, like, once a week. Mm. And then I'm going to stick to vlogging for the rest of the week. But, uh Getting that variety in it's of important. it, it's definitely important because um, for, you know, our, my videos and everything, I try to get something new and always create something different Keep each it time fresh. that you watch it. Yeah. yeah. And I mean... If you're not going to be able to put out content like that, you're just going to keep spewing things every week, every two days or something like that. It's not worth watching. You're not going to want to follow them like that. Yeah. You know? So I, I, it was just trying to figure out what that was going to be. And if I could get gaming and get kind that, of morph it, mm -hmm. grow it. Yeah, exactly. That's and cool, just be man. that entertainment that it is in itself, then that would be like, fingers crossed, hopefully what I could do. But it's crazy. That's one of the best things is the bar of entry has never been lower than it is right now if you've got an idea to do something or even just you know something just came across your mind and you're like oh that would kind of be cool mm -hmm. there's a niche out there for it and gaming especially mm -hmm. it's i was talking to Brayden about it i never thought i mean growing up i was huge like through middle school you know playing <laughs> modern warfare yeah. like gaming all the time and I told my parents, like, I'm going to be a game tester. You know, that's mm. how I'm going to make money. Yeah, a game was tester, no, not yeah, a game player. Yeah, because yeah, there tester. was no money in yeah. playing video yeah, games. Just I mean, sitting there in your own house Yeah, and who would have thought that people would actually... Because, I mean, if you're over at a friend's house and you're watching him play video games, you're like, wow, well, this sucks. Like, mm. I want to play some video games. But yeah. for some reason, it works mm -hmm. on YouTube or on Twitch. Yeah, and I and it as weird as it does sound, I think it's part of that instant gratification that we all get. You yeah. can you can get to it right away. I mean, I'm sure the gaming started out with the how to videos, because those how to videos are very very common. Yeah. And if you want to figure out how to get a cheat code, you want to figure out how to get past this one boss, but secretively, like you don't actually got to beat it regularly like everybody else. You know, there's different people that have that gaming experience and they share that and they get just super big like that, and then it develops into wow, this guy's very comical when he does his gameplays. I want to listen to what he says on a regular basis. And then you start getting into those gameplays where people are talking about important issues or they're trying to make a whole comedic value out of it and everything. I mean, it's just amazing how it developed, but it's not something we expected when we were Came fifth, out of sixth nowhere. grade sitting in the computer lab. We're like, we're not going to go on YouTube and watch a video. Like, that's boring. Yeah. You can make millions. There are players making millions just streaming playing video games having a good old time yeah it is i mean it still blows my mind just talking about it yeah and it's... the fact that dude you can make money doing anything mm -hmm. like if you have a passion i think that's the most important thing at the end of the day you just got to be passionate about it because mm -hmm. if you're not passionate about it then that comes across and then it's like why do i want to watch you do something you're not passionate about mm -hmm. you know i mean all the yeah. guys that i like watching for video games, you know, they're pa they love video games. And like you said, they're also talking about relevant things, you know, whether it be news related or what's going on in their life, like interesting things 
that don't even have to really be that interesting, but mm-hmm. it's just like they're genuine about it, and you're like, man, I kind of want to hear what you have to say about yeah, this. Yeah, it's like them telling a little story while they're playing yeah. their video games. They're like, oh, yeah, last night I went to the fridge to go grab this, and then out of nowhere, something fell off the shelf. I went to go check it out, and my cat ended up eating something. Yeah, you know? just some random story, and you're like, wow, that was crazy. That was pretty entertaining. Yeah. You know, I, I have a, you know, saying like I got a cat that does the same exact thing or something like that. You yeah. Know, it just makes that, you know, it makes you realize that those gamers are just you on a bigger platform. You know, and it's super exciting and it's something that definitely is entertaining. What have you started making any videos for it yet? Or are you uh, still kind of trying uh, to get in? I'm trying to figure it out. I got okay. a, I got a couple of things that I've recorded and everything like that. And I get the concept. Like I said, there's a few tools that I still need and everything. But uh, my biggest concern is, uh, you know, when I'm making my videos, it's around my family. And I love doing that. And I love yeah. being around my family, making those videos with my family. But when I'm doing gaming videos, it's not like somebody's right next to me that I can talk to. Yeah, it's you. You, you right? gotta get you out gotta... of that mentality of like it's just me. Like you're hoping somebody's gonna watch this video later, but you're really just talking to yourself. And you need to figure out to entertain in that like in that time frame. What am I gonna do? You know. And so it's just trying to get over that comf- like discomfort of it is just where I'm at. I got I got videos, and I'm just like awkwardly just staring at the camera like yep i feel like i'm forced to entertain you this is not natural this is not what i want to do right now so you should you should check out twitch man because when i was talking to brayden he said that's one of the best parts because he started out on youtube right he was Mm. making gaming videos for youtube and then he went and started doing twitch and now that's kind of solely what he does he wants to jump back into youtube eventually but Mm. with twitch you can you're interacting with people as you're playing games right so they can jump on to your stream Mm -hmm. chat with you and you can talk to them through your mic and stuff and it's a little more personal Mm -hmm. and less disconnected than if you just put it out on youtube you know Mm. but he seemed to really like that part he said that's his favorite part is you get to talk to people from places all over the world Mm -hmm. and you're having that interaction you're still playing games Mm. you know you kill somebody and you're like oh man did you just see that awesome kill and they're like yeah that was so cool you know Mm -hmm. you're talking shit to each other just having fun Mm -hmm. you know but at least it's not because doing something just by yourself is hard man i made a i was doing moto vlog videos so like i'm riding a motorcycle and vlogging Mm -hmm. right i made those two three years ago never like i didn't even promote it because i was like dude this is not this is not my thing Mm -hmm. i was really passionate about motorcycles you know and i thought Oh, vlogging would be so cool, but I couldn't do, I just didn't like talking to myself. Like, it's a weird yeah. feeling trying to do that. Yeah, and I get that way too, because, you know, you're sitting there and you got your camera set up and you're like, all right, I got to do an intro and an outro. You feel like you have to be like on doing something. Yeah, and so, it, I mean, just getting to that comfortability mm-hmm. with my vlogs, a lot of the intros and outros, I, I do naturally now. It's like, you get more comfortable yeah, with it. You, you just, can definitely see that in your videos. I've just done it so many times. I'm like, yo, guys, what's up? This is Austin Christian. I'm here for my family vlog. Yeah. You know, this video is going to be about such and such. And then towards the end, I'm like, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. Tweet me at da 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 You know, that kind of stuff. And it, it gets like that natural flow of like you can consistently do that. But it also changes every single time. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting more comfortable to just be able to do that. And just because when I'm... All my vlogs are just, they're me recording. I am recording myself talking or doing what we're doing, and it's not involved in anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But so. you can track that comfor- comfortability, mm-hmm. you know? And that's the biggest thing is you have to put in, you got to put in the time mm-hmm. to get there. You're not going to be, you know, just flowing right off the bat. Yeah. It's going to be a little awkward. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And then finally you start hitting that groove, mm-hmm. and you start getting better, and you start getting better than... <laughs> that's where the magic starts happening you know yeah and it was definitely like because i mean just getting my family into it too because they didn't that's wanna, so cool they, that, you, that was my favorite part is that you kind of got your family in there yeah too. i think that's so cool it was just so difficult at first getting everybody come because everybody's got to get over that they're potentially talking to somebody later they're not yeah. talking to somebody right then and there at the time like we're making our conversation but you know as you get into it you see my family is like oh, you guys, just make sure to do this because yep. if you like the video, I'm going to give them a haircut or something crazy like that. And it's like when I finally got that comfortability from them, it was it was a m- good motivator to be like, okay, yeah, we, we can do this. This is an us thing. It's not so much me anymore. It's us, and I like that. Yeah, and being on camera changes people too. Mm-hmm. Kind of got to get used to the feeling of, you know, somebody's going to see this at some point. You kind of got to get over that hump. Yeah, I... Yeah, I mean, when you, it's just like when you hear yourself for the first time on recording. I mean, I'm sure you probably understand and everything. You just hear yourself and you're like, 
Do I sound like that? Do I need to change right. what I'm saying? Like that doesn't sound like me yeah. in my head. And so you're doing the same thing when you're watching a video of yourself. You're looking at it and you're like, Do I really look like that? Like I need a haircut. What yeah. am, what am I'm I? I'm looking a little scruffy. Dude, when I, I had the beard, I was thinking I was like, I gotta shave. Yeah, man. you're you you're feeling like that discomfort because you're constantly recording yourself or constantly recording something, and it's just like. I don't look normal and getting your family to be comfortable with that too. It's like whole other ball game. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to do this. So I have the passion to obviously get over that and be like, oh, I'll just maybe adjust it the next video, but to get somebody else involved into it and convince them like, no, I look ridiculous. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Now you have to be okay with it. It's like, no, that's not how it's going to go for yeah. them. They're going to have to develop and Work figure out like it. they're comfortable with it and everything like that. So have you got, have you been worried about like putting stuff out there for the sense of like, oh man, am I going to get some slack for this or, oh, people are going to take this the wrong way? Have you ever really thought about that? I've always tried to like make sure I don't get into that sort of Kind of keep it clean. Or... Okay. A lot of my videos get based off of like one certain thing. So like I got a video on just trampolines and I'm yeah. like. Yeah, it's not like uh, you're talking about like. Uh, what can you talk about when you're putting together a trampoline? You know? Yeah. I have to clean my you're yard and put up a trampoline. I'm subjects. not going to have a small weird conversation about it. Yeah. Um, I, I do get nervous. I mean, I don't, I don't think that I'm going to say anything crazy, but you know, I, I make sure when I'm like recording or once I'm editing the video, I'm looking back at it and I'm like. I don't want people to think this about me. And if I only use this part of the clip, they're mixing the context out of this area that was in the previous clip. But I can't put that in the video because this was boring. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm like, all right, scratch that. I guess I got to record a little bit longer and everything. And yeah, so I I definitely not so much try to censor myself, but I I try and be weary of that kind of stuff because I don't want people to think that I'm such a one minded person. You know, I don't want people to think that I'm trying to be open minded about everything. So, which is hard because today, man, you say the wrong thing, even if it's you working through a thought or mm. you trying to just process something that. Yeah. That even can blow up. Yeah. If you're like, if we're sitting here right now and I'm saying something and I just like all of a sudden say this and I'm like still thinking it at that time and I'm like, well, that's not really what I meant. Yeah. This you're like, wait, let I me, meant. let me take that back yeah, and okay, change let that. Me retract, retract. And you're like, well, this is what I really meant. And so when you're in charge of your own stuff, it's easier to do that. You're like, yeah. you look at it and I mean, I have my girlfriend go over the video after I upload it. I'm like, do I got to delete this right away? <laughs> like, what do you think of this video? Did I go too far on something? Like, what do you think of this? Do you do you not like what you are doing in the video? Do you want to be out of it? And I always try and make sure they're okay with what the video looks like if they're in it. Same with if we have friends in it. I make sure it's like, hey, you're in the video and this is what you look like in the video. Is that okay? And like, Are you all right with this? Yeah, like, are you okay? Because I don't want to misrepresent you in any yeah. sort of way, shape, or form. So um, approve, please. And so I'm always worried, like, I need to get a contract and sign people down, like, I am okay for Austin Christian to use this clip from minute da 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 to this, you know, and it's like, oh, so nerve wracking, but I don't want to misrepresent somebody. That's, that's, that's a part of it, Mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day. That's why I'm not really big on, like, social media in the sense of, like, I don't really post a whole lot of pictures on Instagram or I'm not out tweeting things. Um, I'm not going crazy on Facebook writing these long rants, you know mm. what I mean? But this, I feel like if this is like a safe space to, you know, get as wild or go as far out as you want, cause mm. there's enough time where you can walk it back and be like, okay, well, you know, after saying that, maybe I feel a little different. And yeah. even from episode to episode, your views are going to change or mm. they should, you know, you should be open to new things. Yeah. That's, well, and especially with the YouTube videos that you're doing, you have the time to do that. Mm. You know what I mean? Whereas if you make a tweet. That's out there and it's gone. Yeah. I mean. I mean There's no even walking if that back. Yeah. Even if you do delete it, there's a chance somebody screenshotted that. And that's, Which that's you see happening there. all the everywhere. time. Everywhere. Yeah. Like, you can't get away from that. No. And especially when you start growing, like you're saying, with a bigger fan base and everything, it's like uh yeah there's one of my even if it's like 30 followers one of my 30 followers l- probably screenshotted that and oh, hates yeah. me now about yeah that. and it's Saying, like this guy's crazy we need mm-hmm. to cancel him he can't be saying this exactly and take his platform and i mean I, I actually get in trouble a lot about this because uh my social media i don't 
do anything on it. You know, uh, when I was doing vlogs and I was doing uh, YouTube and everything like that, it was that was the only thing I ever posted about. Mm -hmm. Like and promo stuff. Yeah, it was like, hey, come check out my video. Let me know what you think. Leave a like down below and let me know if there's anything you want to see in the future, that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I was doing all that. And so a big opportunity was the fact that a lot of, you know, our family is not close or with this whole COVID 19 everything yeah. we can't be close everybody's supposed to be six feet apart wear a mask not be in public not be in large groupings and everything like that and so the vlogs was really nice for everybody to see our daughter grow and keep develop. in touch yeah and be see what we're up to see what we're doing and everything and then i just out of nowhere i was like done i i gotta pause I, like i gotta catch myself there's something going on that's not right and i gotta yeah. figure it out and i i had people like even people that work with you know me or work with you know my wife yeah. at where she works and everything and they're like hey how come your family stopped doing vlogs and <laughs> they're like you know i was i was enjoying those like and then you're like well if i get back into it now it's gonna seem kind of weird when do i jump in and so but i was like i'm i'm just working on stuff i'm trying to develop something that's why it hasn't been there yet but i definitely get some flack for it because my twitter my instagram my snapchat my whatever it's blank right now just yeah. because i'm so focused on my family and everything so that's good sometimes you got to take a step back mm -hmm. just to kind of catch your breath refresh a little bit and then you can dive back in and make it even better yeah you exactly know, at the end of the day. and i felt like if i wasn't gonna give it my 100 percent on the vlog then i shouldn't keep on doing it at that moment that's a good mindset yeah because why put out something that's not 100 percent? Mm -hmm. and so i like i said i got stuff in the works still it's, i'm excited it's, man yeah, it's gonna come out and everything but it's just gonna Take some time to get yeah. back into it and everything for sure. Yeah, and it takes time to create the video. I don't know how much editing you do for your stuff, but dude, it's it's kind of time consuming. I mean, you're talking about I I think you heard I heard with one of your things it was like two and a half hours of like video footage and everything that you're using to edit. Well, yeah, Brandon and I were talking about yeah, it takes hours to work through stuff. So I mean, I'm sitting there and I record everything. I mean, I was recording us driving, us going home and going to the store, us going traveling like the entire day, us sitting at home and just eating. I'm recording all of that. So my videos end up being like three days. Oh, worth, man. Like of each just day, footage. it's like eight hours of footage. Oh, and I'm my like, God. How do I even work through this? Yeah, because you have to watch the basically the entire thing all the way through. And then you take out what you don't like. And then as you're going like. Once you've gone through one clean run of it, you're going back and you're rewatching whatever two hours you got left until you're working down to the last like five minutes, seven yeah. minutes or whatever. And it's just like, oh, it's so much time. It's daunting. It. Yeah. Especially, I mean, I couldn't, I would just lose my mind if I had that much footage. With the video, I luck out. I just don't edit the video, mm. put the video out there, but the audio you got to listen back to it mm -hmm. a couple times to make sure, okay, like it sounds good. Just cleaning up the audio. I try not to cut things out because that's when stuff gets misconstrued, right? As you start yeah. taking portions and moving it. So I try to just keep it pure, but still you got to listen back. You got to go through it. And, it's and if like, you do cut something out just because it was a long pause or something, then you're like, well, did that sound, was that a smooth transition? Yeah, did I, it do, it, sound did I do it in silence yep. here and silence here? Or am I like catching the end of a sentence Towards is the it going to clip the... and then you're going to catch a weird stutter or something mm -hmm. that wasn't actually there? Yeah, and you're like, I'm sure somebody's going to hear that. But yep. it's the same with videos, you know? You want to be able to have a transition. And make it clean. And make it a clean transition into whatever's coming up next yeah. and everything. So just getting that was definitely a hard concept. There's definitely a learning curve. Yes. With I had no idea how much work I actually went into producing or creating anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it blows your mind. When you actually sit down, because you're going to be your biggest critiquer mm -hmm. right at the end of the day, and you're working through it, and you're like, no, it's not good enough. No, it's not good enough. No, mm -hmm. it's not good enough. And then you hit a point that's like, I just got to put it out because it's gonna never going to be nothing. It's I can never going to make be this up. better right now. Every dude, every video I've made, I've listened back to it, and I'm like, man, I could have done this, or I mm -hmm. could have made that better, I could have made this cleaner. Mm -hmm. Like you could spend months just working on one thing, trying to make it perfect, but then. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're not going to have your content out there. Yeah, but I got to say, I mean, when it came to video editing and when it came to like audio editing and different things like that, like you can tell as my videos go on, it got, oh, yeah. it got better. Oh, yeah. It was definitely improved and everything. Which is how it's supposed to be. I loved it. I loved sitting down and just looking at my phone and just going through it and just being like, uh, 
I got to clip it back like half a second. Oh, I went too far. I got to go a little bit more. But then once I got done, my next video sounded better than my first video or my video before. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, I'm getting this. Progress. And I'm making, I'm making this work. Yeah. You know? And it was super gratifying. And I was like, okay, I can do this, you know? So. Yeah. That feeling of, man, it's, it's getting better. Like that is, you get addicted to that mm -hmm. a little bit. Like, oh man, I can make. Yeah. I can make this still better. And yeah. I think that's how, it, I don't think it's ever going to be a hundred percent, right? You're always going to be like, there's that next level. Mm -hmm. I could go and I can hit that next level. Yeah. You're like, more oh, time. audio quality was terrible on this. Let me go get this set up. So that way I can have better audio, audio yeah. quality. Oh, well, the video is not exactly the resolution I want. I want to go do this. And I'm going to go buy this for this. Yeah. You, you know? can spend, I mean, shit with your setup, you can dump in however much money you have, mm -hmm. which is, crazy and yeah. it's cool in that you can start from the bottom and yes. have really good stuff that's super cheap and it's still going to be i tell everybody if you want to create something go the only one stopping you is you because mm -hmm. you could go get you know spend 50 bucks and get everything you need yeah your biggest en enemy is yourself that's what it is at the end if of the day yeah if you're not motivating yourself to go do something or do anything you're not going to do it yeah you're not going to want to do it and you're not going to do it yeah so and youtube man Anybody can put anything on YouTube. Yes. So if you've got a niche or you're like, hey, man, I've got I've got something to say, put it out on YouTube. Yeah. And that's and that's why everybody is moving away from YouTube. You know, it's such a big market. There's and, a lot that, of stuff out there. And to get up there in like high ranks and everything, 10 million subscribers, whatever you want, whatever your goal is. It's such a big market, and we all start in the same area. Mm -hmm. You know, we're all everyone starting starts at the bottom. Zero. We all start with zero. That's it is how a great everybody equalizer. before us started, and that's how everybody after us is going to start. You got yeah. zero. And I remember that was my biggest dream crusher when I was doing this at first. I'm looking at it, and I would update my stuff every and single nobody's day. Nobody's listening, and you're like, why? Are, why yeah. is nobody watching this? My only my family's watching yeah. this. Like, what's going on? I thought it was funny, but yeah. you're not. But then. It's because you don't have that exposure. So then I got families sharing it with friends instead of family and family sharing it with other families share it with friends and everything. Mm -hmm. And then you start seeing that number go up and you're like, all right, we're getting so I got this, I guess, you know? Yeah. So you just, it's hard starting out. Cause you, like you said, you've only got the family and I started out, I didn't have anybody <laughs> viewing. Right. So I was starting out with not that I'm getting thousands of views yeah. now. Right. Like I don't want to blow it up or anything, but starting out dude i had no views mm -hmm. and i was putting it out and i'm like well i watched it so i guess i got one right do i keep going yeah or am that's i the, the only thing. one that you likes gotta this? just keep going yes i mean if you're i guess there does come a point because if you're do if you've been doing it for 10 years and still nobody's watching them maybe you should change your niche or either change, your change market. something or move yeah, something's to a not working for him yeah i mean if you're getting that sort of thing but everybody has to go with that slow gradual snail it pace takes, it takes yeah to. You There's absolutely no, have to. Some things blow up overnight, but that is so rare. You can't bet mm. on that. Yeah, and that's not like an expectation it's you not realistic. should have when you come yeah. into these kind of things, whether it be podcast, YouTube, streaming. Whatever I mean, you're doing. All of us will tell you the same. It's like, you have to go slow. And I'm, I'm not talking like I'm big or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, right. We're both. I'm sitting at under we're 100 crushing it subscribers out here. on yeah, YouTube. Right? But the motivation for me to like, as much as nobody else knows until this comes out, I'm still working. Yeah. And I'm still trying to grind for everybody that is my subscribers and that is trying to go through with it that there's going to be more. I just, I got to get it and I got to make sure it's exactly what you guys want. Mm -hmm. And we have to take a pause to get where we want to be as a team, whether yeah. you're my subscriber whether you're my family and my videos or it's myself, we, we have to take this pause. That's kind of how I look at it. Yeah. And so it's necessary. Sometimes mm -hmm. I've watched a couple YouTubers take time off that I was watching, you know, they were pretty big and they all say the same thing. It's like, sometimes you get, you know, you just got to take a step back just for a little bit of time yeah. just so that you can come back and be stronger. And they're in big YouTubers. Man. Everybody Huge. does. It. Yeah. It's like taking a vacation from mm -hmm. work, right? Sometimes, you just get burnt out with work. Mm -hmm. Not because you don't enjoy what you're doing or because you're not having a good time, but because... You're just not keeping a balance that you'd like at the time. And it takes a lot of energy. And it does take a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. I mean, like you're saying, even for Brayden, who's playing video games all the time and he's doing stream and, you know... It's that's still work, man. It's work. You, yeah. you go in there and you're like, well, somebody's going to end up messaging me on Twitch and say, hey, get five kills. Like, 
I guess I'm going to try for you. Like, and I know that's why I was like, when you said Twitch, I was like, mm, I don't know about that much because I'm, I'm terrible at video games. Yeah, I love I'm doing not. it for myself, yeah. but all my games are easy mode. Yeah. <laughs> I don't go out of easy mode. And yeah. it's, it's, I know that video gaming is not my thing, but I know I can be entertaining and have that sort of mentality. The same with my YouTube videos. And that's why I wanted to move it into recording it. I don't want to give you guys hours of me just staring there trying to be a try hard at this game. No, I'm, no talking, just dead silence. And you I'm just... realistically just the worst player that's ever going to be on Twitch, you know? So, but there's a mar- dude there. YouTube has been doing a lot of gaming videos. I've noticed. And you don't even have, you don't have to be good at all. Mm. There are, I, I watch a lot of, uh, or not a lot, but I watch some like Warzone mm. videos, you know, from, mm. uh, Call of Duty. And there are people that I'm not good, and I'm thinking, man, this guy's really not good. But they, you know, like a few thousand people mm-hmm. streaming, watching his stream live. Mm. It's like that's cool. Yeah, because you don't have to be good as long as you've got, as long as you're genuine and you you're kind of interesting. You mm. don't even have to be that interesting, just a little bit, right? Yeah, dude, it's gonna be. And that, just put in the time and that's where it's like i'm telling you i'm like i got some stuff in the work and yeah. it's like because it's not comfortable yet yeah it's not something where i'm like you know i can get on here and get on this video and be talking hey guys to you. it's out here yeah yeah and i can be comfortable with doing that kind of stuff but when it comes to gaming and i'm like talking to myself and i'm still trying to get in the flow of like i don't want to just sit here and not talk i think yeah. that's where it's a little bit just like it's another learning curve mm-hmm, and yeah. i'm just waiting for it that's all it is so yeah but man, that's I'm excited for that. That'll mm. be cool for you. Yeah. Those gaming uh, Kaz, a buddy of mine, is getting into that too, I think. Which, dude, if you play video games, I think everyone should try. At least try to stream Just it. Just give right? it a try, yeah. I mean, because you don't know, dude, not... you could if you're playing video games anyways why not just live stream it yeah i mean just see what other people think and i yeah. mean for all you know that's one of those things i mean you hear all the time like we were talking about a second ago it's all those people that are blown up and all those people that just get one video that blows up well you might get lucky you know but you're not taking you got one chance. insane game where you didn't even know what was happening but somehow you made it to the end yeah. or something crazy and, and then you got like the you're won the whole entire round and yet it's like and you're freaking out you're like how did i even do that and somebody else is watching yeah. it just goes exactly and so i mean yeah if you're not taking your chance i mean it's, what are you doing yeah it's it's on you that's yeah. all it is yeah especially so. with video games with mm-hmm. anything really but especially with video games because mm-hmm. everyone's doing it have you checked out any of the vr stuff yeah <laughs> i've looked at that it's pretty entertaining that's dude for it's sure. crazy mm-hmm. that is gonna be the next frontier for video games it's gonna be so weird i mean i i mean right now vr is definitely pretty cool too because of the aspect of you got the social distance so if you are gonna want to play games with friends as much as there is online and everything you know you can be essentially with your friends as you're playing the game in vr and they're technically right next to you in the virtual reality world and so i think that's absolutely insane and it's gonna be a big market bigger than it already is oh man because the graphics are good yes now they're good yes but it's like ps2 good right back yeah. in the day you were like dude this is insane. this is amazing yeah, this can't these get blocky any characters mm-hmm. are legit yeah but then i mean if you compare the ps2 to now. the ps5 yes. or the xbox the new xbox mm-hmm. you're like whoa so yeah. imagine what four years is going to do for vr i think i think that's going to be all video games is and it's just four years i mean it's potentially Which is the four blink years. of an eye come yeah. on i mean we're talking about you think back to when we were just in high school yeah. the gaming world was not what it is today and now it's like this is a very short time frame when you're in high school you don't contemplate like i'm just gonna record myself doing something and i'm gonna get paid for it but now it's like uh, that is something that kids 12 years old are already doing and that's a mentality those unboxing- they have had. you seen those kids that do these unboxing videos and they're like six and dude they're making millions of dollars yeah i mean what i i don't get it that I, stuff like that is crazy because it's like it it's just a six-year-old opening something mm-hmm. and then be like oh this is so cool and then they put it down and it gets millions of views yeah. it's the same concept you have with vine all the people that got huge with vine it's like vine was crazy and the fact that it just it's gone it, it was gone like, i mean you still got the archives you know <laughs> but still like yeah that just, vine was and now vine reminds me of do you remember flappy bird yes dude and it was 
everywhere. This little outrageous. This little mm-hmm. iPhone or Android. It was on Android too, wasn't it? Yeah. Just this little app mm-hmm. where you were just you're just tapping the screen, tapping you know, the screen, and a bird was flying, and you were avoiding stuff. And yeah. it, dude, overnight it was everywhere. Huge. You everywhere. were trying to get the highest score. You yeah, it's like, to oh, get you don't have Flappy Bird? Game. Are you kidding me? What? Yeah, like, what, what are, you are you doing with your life? Yeah. You're sitting in class, and you got nothing else to Everybody's do. Everybody's all just playing, and it's like... I remember, like, one time we were in Spanish class, and we got in so much trouble, because it was towards the end of the year. We're like, we ain't got nothing Everybody's else zoning to out. do. It's like, come on. It's like, why are we even still in school? But you're just sitting there, and you're all, like, you got people huddled around you trying to see if you can get a new high score. Yeah. And then you got, like, the boss man in the class that's, like, at... Two thousand, three thousand. There's always and that just, guy, and he's like, "Hey, you're just like whatever, man. We're on the same playing field. You yeah. go be your expert in a different class. Like, don't yeah, come, come over on here." It was, and then it was just gone. Yeah, what? It was like a week, well, if that. And the whole reason it was gone was just insane. You know, everybody. They were so popular, right? I think this is why they were so popular that the creators and they were getting so much slack. Mm-hmm. Everyone was like, "How is this game so popular? It's so dumb. Yeah, it's, it's so not simple. artistic. There's mm-hmm. nothing." like insane about it and it's huge and they were raking in the cash and then the creators got so much slack they just pulled it Mm -hmm. which come on man why just leave it up what what do you care the whole point of creating a frustration when like it got taken away if you didn't were selling phones for if you didn't didn't, like update your phone or something like that and you still had the original you know flappy bird and everything you were making money off of just the app because it, it was a free app. It's not like yeah. we spent money on that app. It was a free app. Yeah. In-game purchases, sure. But, I mean. It's, it was insane. It was crazy. Overnight sensation. And then it was just gone. Yeah. Which, that, if that speaks to anything, it should speak to being resolute in you. In who you are and what you're doing. Because if those creators would have just said, hey, we made this. We don't care what you say. We're going to ignore you don't all like the backlash. The yeah, don't, don't doubt get about it. it. Yes. Which is the mentality everybody needs to have today. <laughs> yeah. That is so lost. But if the creators had that, they could have made a load more money. Mm-hmm. But they got they got so much slack, which the, at the end of the day, they should have just been like, hey, people are downloading the app. So clearly we did something right. Something's going right? well for us. And even if it is just a young market, and that young market's going to grow up and you're still going to have the same consistent the young the day, market and you're getting us that are growing older and everything. Like if I had Flappy Bird today, I'd play it. I'm not going to play it. Yeah. I'm not going to play it. I'm going to play it. It's kind of like uh, oh, Crossy, Crossy Roads. Yes. So Where you're like the chicken tr- and i don't like have it moving I, I don't I have played it. that in a yeah. minute i i haven't played it in like <sighs> forever but i hear about people talking about that all the time and you can get it on switch or now. like candy crush isn't that is that big that, that's big right that was pretty big i don't know if it still is i, mean, I never played that one yeah i never played it either but i i remember you know well, it's like, like tiktok that's a good equivalent tiktok is huge yes. today and i mean I, I, when do you have a started, tiktok i don't have yeah, a I don't tiktok have. I was like, i'm tapping out for that one yeah i'm like, not i'm not invested you know it's uh, yeah it's, it's i just can't get into you it you gotta get so much motivation on yourself to get that kind of yeah, yeah no and thank, i think yeah. that's for the younger generation like the generation below us right it's yeah. all because i see using tiktok yeah. i say that like i'm 50 looking down at this I back feel, in my day we yeah, didn't have I mean, no tiktok how, how many vine videos did you have oh dude i was into vine uh, i didn't create any vine videos but dude i watched a ton of them. right so you watched vine, oh but yeah you weren't like uploading vine no i wasn't doing time. i wasn't creating it so if you look at it a lot of the people that used to have vine there are a lot like the big stars of vine that used to do it they're on tiktok now they're doing are they really so yeah if you just look at bigger groups and everything they're doing tiktok it it's like a replacement for it you know mm-hmm. everybody got vine taken away so quick and then they got this whole new thing you're doing the same thing you're uploading videos you have audio go over it you're doing short little videos they're not super long they're super short the, those same people that had such an, a good follow on vine they're like well this is this is my itch this yeah. is what i want to do i'm just gonna do tiktok so it's like you said that younger generation and that vine generation because when, when we were younger we were super into vine and we would watch them constantly maybe we didn't do it but we'd watch it constantly we were consuming the content and now the same people that are consuming the content at that time we're going to consume tiktok as well i mean i see people scrolling through tiktok and it's the same they were doing the same thing on vine when vine was out and everything so some of the content though that's out on tiktok is a little bit out there because i'll see stuff 
like on Instagram, they repost TikTok videos, you know? Mm-hmm. So I guess I'm still <laughs> occasionally wa- watching TikTok, I guess. Right. Um, But it's all these really young kids just doing some wild stuff. But that's like you were saying. If you got an itch, scratch it. I mean, just Yeah, do but it's, it. a lot of it's weird because it's like these really young kids and they're doing sexual uh like skits yeah but it's like you look like you're 10 yeah you probably are 10 you probably you shouldn't are be i feel uncomfortable this, watching like, this yeah. you shouldn't be making this like you're 10 yeah like what what yeah and it's like you could do tiktok we're not saying don't do tiktok yeah, and by all means yeah, do whatever you want but like at that age doing that's kind of one of the weird doing. things about social media is yeah you have the power to put out anything but should you yeah <laughs> dude i'm so glad that i didn't because i didn't even get a phone till sixth grade and i had the little flip mm. phone and oh, i had yeah. that through like my freshman year of high school just a little flip i couldn't go on any like yeah. facebook like I all mean, that stuff when i turned 12 was when our bit our family was big on like you get a phone now and it's mm. like yeah you got a phone but it's like that one flip phone that your grandpa has now, and you're just, yep. it's like a blue color. You're ashamed to pull it out around yeah, your friends because they've got like texting. iPhones or razors back in the day when razors were oh the my rage goodness. or the I sliding remember, keyboards. I remember when I got the razor, I flipped that thing until it flipped no more. Oh, I man. flipped it and it snapped, and I didn't have a phone. Felt so cool just being like, yeah, you're just flipping it, and it made that click sound exactly. And it's just like, that was the, that was the thing. And, but now you look at it and you're like, what is that? Oh, yeah. They still make phones like that? Yeah. Come on. You're like, that's not something I need anymore. Yeah. But. I don't know, man. I couldn't imagine. Because think about the things you you do as a kid, right? You you have no idea about anything. Mm-hmm. You think you know a lot of stuff, but. Well, that's the big scary thing about social media now. and going It's, it's into out there. It, and once you put it out, I couldn't imagine if I did that as a kid. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. Nope. I have like, I think it's three Facebook accounts that i used to use and then i forgot the password and now they're just out there anybody can follow it anybody can do all the content still out there all the content still out there but i was i was lucky enough i didn't do anything crazy like that but if i had i i don't know how to recover all this kind of stuff you know yeah. i don't know how to find this and delete this officially and everything it was like what do you do it's out there it's there and it's gonna stay but like i said i mean i never had that problem as a kid but if you do that now and you do like we were talking earlier that controversial talking and that controversial statement and you feel this way and you don't have the context of the person now it's like well all they're gonna get is that because they can't find what i currently feel and Mm -hmm. they're gonna think i still feel that way you know so i was talking to my dad a little while ago and I, he read an article or saw some video or something that said you know they're speculating about what the future is going to look like and i guess the essence of it was that you know younger people like our age and younger are going to have to change their name it's going to come to that point because some of the content that they put out that could be considered risky and stuff is going to keep them from getting jobs because mm-hmm. it's not gone even if you delete the accounts now it you don't know who has what yeah and that can follow you around and then repost share yeah what if you're trying to get a job and back in sixth grade you said some salacious wild stuff that you totally to one side and yeah that you didn't even know what you were really saying yeah you were just you heard it and you're like i'm gonna repeat I'm gonna, this which and is I'm gonna what make kids sure do everybody right? else if you knows say, about it if you cuss around a kid, dude, they're hooked on that word for... Oh, I get so nervous around my daughter. <laughs> I, I bet, right? You've got to watch it. I'm like, uh, I'm not going to say that word that yeah. much, but I mean... Because yeah. they hear it, and then it's like, oh, uh, there's yeah, some power in this. I don't I gotta... want that to be my daughter's third But imagine fourth, if your daughter... Word. Yeah, what if she's like, I don't know, eight, and she's tweeting F-bombs just because she just heard it or something, and then yeah. 10 years down the road, she tries to get a job, and they're like, well, you were tweeting... Yeah. You were just saying... F this person, F that person. And then how do you get away from that? Yeah, exactly. Or even if you get held accountable for that context, you know, my daughter has an account at some age and there's like some new Twitter thing and it's like hashtag dad say, you know, and it's something that I said. And maybe at the time I was saying it because I was frustrated, but I don't mean it, Yeah, you know, but she's like posting it. And then now it's like, well, your daughter said that you said this word for word. Do you mean this? And I'm like, no. You get fired. Yeah, exactly. That happened with, we're going full circle, I guess, back to the (laughs) Rayshard Brooks shooting, right? The guy at Wendy's. The mom 
of the officer that shot him got fired from her job because of what her son did, right? <clears throat> I was just reading articles about that, which... We all get backlash for every... You we know, gotta draw the line somewhere, though. You, Come on. We're gonna start holding other people accountable for actions of other people? Yeah. I mean, you just get scared because, I mean, all, everybody always says, you know, you're... You are who you're friends with, or yeah. you are who your group is and everything. You just get so nervous. You're like, oh, I'm affiliated with this person, and they just said that. I got to take it all back. You know, it'd be like if I came on here, and you watched one of my videos. You, you start saying seen some yet, crazy stuff or something. Like, you feel that way? I yeah. got to delete this right here. And it's because you don't want to be affiliated with that, and that that's just so weird. But you get held accountable for other people's actions. That's that. Is so crazy though because that is the furthest thing from how it should be, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you should be judged on who you are individually. Exactly. You know, I mean, who you are at that point in time because mm -hmm. who you are today is going to be different than who you are tomorrow or ten years from now. Or yes, you. I mean, to hold people to the same expectations of a different time, it's just it's kind of ridiculous. Yes, especially if what? So now if your buddy goes and kills somebody or something. Now you're going to be held responsible. Like, how does that even, how do you even track that line of thinking? Yeah. It's like, I mean, uh, I don't, you didn't go to school with me in elementary school and everything like that, but there, yeah, I don't think so. There's, right? there's, uh, there's some like controversial stuff going on right now that, uh, you know, somebody I went to school with, I wasn't friends with or anything like that, but somebody I went to school with just is doing horrendous things, constantly getting caught, constantly going to jail, whatever it is. And it's like, I I don't get nervous, but I'm sure anybody who was friends at that time with that person is like, well, shoot, like, was the, like, am I going to get held accountable? Like, this was years ago, you yeah. know, but you still get nervous about, like, what's going to happen. I mean, it's just crazy. We don't have to say names, but is it that kid that has been in the news? Lately? Yeah. Yes. And he went, it was the home thing for that guy. Uh, the break-ins? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I went, yeah. I knew that kid too. Yeah. So it was just. I think I played sports with like him. Like soccer at one and point everything. In time. I'm yeah. pretty sure soccer and soft, like baseball, t-ball, whatever. I think I played, it was probably t-ball or something. Yeah. Or maybe a different division or some higher, yeah. something. I just have this recollection but of I talking to him and interacting with him. I saw that name. Yeah. You could tell I was like trying to like not say yeah. the name and everything because I don't want, but I saw that name and I was like, there's no way. I was like, as, are you serious? And so yeah. you go back through that. And then as much as it sucks, you're like remembering what that person was like. And you're like, what? How when did that person I grow up? That? Yeah. When was I when supposed was that, to When was that, that switch out? flipped? Yeah. And they just. I mean, you just, I guess you just don't know. You um, never know. But I mean, we're talking about somebody we knew in elementary school. I'm sure that was about the same time or maybe even junior high for you. I think I. I don't know. I mean, it was so long ago. I definitely, it was definitely around elementary school. I think we were playing sports together or something, but I, I, he, did he go to the high school with us or did no. he go to Zane? No, he, uh, maybe Zane. Okay. Maybe it was maybe Zane, went to Zane I met him too. I'm not sure. Uh, but I know he didn't go to high school. Okay. He didn't. So it might've been Zane. Yeah. So, but, um, but you know, yeah. you have these interactions with people. I mean, uh, all this is substantial. I mean, it's alleged, you know, nothing's finalized, nothing's figured out yet or anything like that. They don't, have, oh, they don't, they, they don't know yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I no, thought it was pretty it set was, in stone. I mean, you. it was pretty set in stone. I mean, video. Oh, they've said, got video on him? Kinda. You know, everybody's got those zooms. <laughs> Everyone has zoom, man, on their doorbells and everything and all the video footage on the, just their porch and everything. There's, I mean, just. You're not going to be able to get away with anything. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be interesting, but still at this point, it's open to interpretation okay. i mean i'm not gonna say it is a yes or it is a no just because i i don't pay attention to it that much but i'm just hearing like the updates on it and i'm just yeah like, just what? last i heard he was booked that yes. was my last there, there's been kind of... like more stuff that has came out locally and it's oh, just man. like what like wow and yeah so and i think he was a nice kid i don't remember having any bad interactions with him back then i mean elementary school was different so I, I, I mean, I have memories of him and I'm not going to say he was a bully or anything like that because he was far from it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've dealt with worse. Uh, he was just, you know, there. There's just somebody there. Yeah. And you just don't think it, 
You know, you don't think that it's going to happen like that. You don't think it's going to go down for you. Anything's going to be like that. Yeah. But now imagine his friends, right? Because you got everyone's mm-hmm. got friends to some extent. Yeah. But imagine what his friends are thinking, right? Like, oh, man. Or those people that were really close at that time. Yeah, maybe back in high school, wherever Junior he went. High. You were best friends yes. with him. You guys hung out all the time. And now you're thinking, crap. Like, all right. we had the same views on this. Like, should I be scared? I'm gonna snap soon, you know. And it's just like, <laughs> I don't, ooh, if you're thinking that, we yeah, might, I think you I might want to go wanna, get, yeah, yeah go you get might want to talk to somebody, yeah. So, but, but you, you don't know, yeah, and just, you don't know, yeah, it, it'll be interesting, but yeah, that was just crazy. And but going back to what we were saying, yeah, to hold somebody accountable for, for being somebody his else's actions, yes, and it's like, come on, guys, it's not the same, it's really not. I think we just. Well, I don't know. I think we just there people look I think everyone just wants to be outraged sometimes. Not <laughs> I mean some things are valid, but a lot of the times it's mob mentality, one person is offended, then everyone jumps on board and it's like you you don't even know why. What's a what's a natural instinct to you? What do you when you think natural instinct, what's the first thing that comes to mind to you? Meaning what? So like you know, you're going in naturally. Like, oh, for like a mob mentality yeah, thing? Yeah, so mob well, mentality. Yeah. If everyone's jumping up, well, I'm kind of different. If everybody's jumping on a person, now that I've matured a little bit more <laughs> than in the past, I would be like, okay, I got to get, why Why does everyone not like this person? Or mm-hmm. why is everyone ragging on this person? Yeah, but back in the day when you're a kid, if you see everyone jumping on a person, mm-hmm. you might not jump on them with them, but you're definitely not going to stick up for them or mm-hmm. say anything, especially if you don't know, because then yeah. they're going to turn on you. Well, yeah, because so you're thinking at that point, fight or flight. What are you doing? Are you going to stand there and are you going to make a fight or are you going to fly away? Are you yeah. going to have that flight mentality where you just stand down to the side? Yeah. I mean, that That's where you, you know, maturity, I guess you could call it when you get it's older. It's something, right? I almost of... don't want to call it maturity because a lot of people, especially now, it's not maturity because they're older they've mm-hmm. got life experience but they're just riding the bandwagon because they don't want it to be turned on them yes which exactly. i think is most of it mm. yeah i can see where both arguments are made you know yeah. so it's definitely everybody is not allowed to everybody's allowed to have their own opinion but everybody's not allowed to have their own opinion at the same time if that makes sense you know because yeah. somebody's not somebody's not gonna like your opinion on something you know as much as you get along with somebody there's always going to be something where you're like I don't really see it that way. It doesn't. Whatever you do. Yeah. What It, it, it could, could be, be something super, super small or something super huge. It could be you you making videos or me doing the podcast. Somebody out there is going to be like, you know, F these guys. Mm-hmm. What, they're doing this. And 90% of that is just stemming from them wanting to do it themselves and them not doing it. And then they're, they've got a little bit of resentment. Or, that, or they think that, you know, you're trying to do this and you're trying to make money. That's not fair. I work a nine to five job. Why do you get to do yeah, this? Why do you get to just talk to people or film yourself and you get to make money? Yeah, exactly. It's, it, there's weird little nuances in all of that. So you have your opinion. Yeah, exactly. Of like, I, I love doing these videos for people and I love creating this content for people. But then somebody else has an opinion of like, I don't like your opinion. Yeah. I don't like what you're doing, you know, and it's, and if you can't get over that mentality, you're not going to keep creating because as much as you like, you know, doing what you're doing, if you keep on letting people have their opinions of like, you shouldn't be doing this, this is bad. And you start thinking to yourself, oh, this is bad, you know, then you just can't move forward. I remember one of my videos was dedicated to the fact that I had somebody that had said something on my video and it was supposed to be mean, but like, I couldn't understand it. I was genuinely trying to read it. And so I was trying to do, um, like, a follow back for it. And I just told everybody, I was like, let me know how you feel. If you don't like this, then do it. Like, I think I thought you were in your car talking about that. Uh, there was, yeah, I was, okay. I was in my car and I was talking about it. And it's like, hashtag Ben 2020, because the name of the guy was Ben. And ben 2020. It, yeah, hashtag Ben 2020. <laughs> um, and it's just like, you know, if you want to say something hateful about me and it helps you get through your day, by all means, go ahead and do it. I'm here. I don't. You know, I don't, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words shall never hurt me. You can say what you want to me and what you think of me. I'm sure one part of it had to do with my neck. And I was like, huh? Like, what are we doing here, guys? Yeah, I was like, okay, you don't like my neck. Don't watch. If you don't like it, don't watch. I'm like, they're going after your neck. Like, come, <laughs> what? It- yeah, I know. It was, it was so entertaining. <laughs> but I mean, it was that same, like, they had their opinion. And I have my opinion. Everybody's got an opinion, which yeah. you should, you 
completely should be allowed to have your opinion. You can voice your opinion. Um, the problem comes from you holding on to your opinion so tight that you think everyone else's opinion is wrong mm-hmm. and then going after people for it, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's definitely what it is. But you gotta, especially if you're in the public eye, like we kind of are to some extent. Right. You have to be, you gotta be strong, mm-hmm. man, because there's gonna come a point in time, I think for most people doing stuff like that, where you're gonna get some backlash. Mm-hmm. And it's either going to, you're either going to push through it and come out the other side or it might make you hang up whatever you're doing. Yeah. I mean, it's like criticism. How well do you accept criticism? Like we're talking to ourselves, we're our worst critic. And that, yeah. that is true because it takes a lot of personal mentality. But if you let somebody continuously beat you up about something you're not doing right and you continue to take like, it to heart, you're and like, internalize it, man, I am doing this. It's really yourself. It's not them. Yeah. You're not getting that mentality of look, I'm doing the best that I can. I need to move forward. You're getting that mentality of like, I'm not doing good. Like, Man, I, I, I shouldn't be on. doing this. Yeah. And so definitely. Yeah. It can be crippling. That. Yeah. You just yeah. got to, it's dude. Sometimes people just want to hate just to hate yeah. criticism. I think criticism can be good. Like criticism in and of itself isn't bad. Right. If you've got friends who are like, Hey, maybe do, maybe think about trying this or, Hey, you know, this was a little, yeah, I mean out there, but strangers just going like going at you for your neck. Like, yeah. Well, what? even on my videos, I'm very very particular, and I ask family, friends, people that are randomly watching people that you I mean, care they're, about they're, their opinion. Yeah, and there yeah. are other people that watch my videos, and I'm aware of that and everything. And they've hit me up, and I know people from like the UK, and they've hit me up, and I know oh, people cool. from different places in the United States, and they've messaged me, and they're like, hey, can I get a shout out on your video? I'm like, yeah, sure, well, that's no problem. Like, yeah. I'll go ahead and subscribe to you. We're a market. We got to help each other out kind of deal. And so, but going back to like the criticism from them is like perfect. I want to make sure who's watching my videos, they continue to watch it. You got to play to your audience. So I've had people message me personally and say, hey, you know what? If you want more views, try and be consistent with this or try and do a certain thing like this. And I'm sure you'll get more views. Just some friendly advice. Yeah. Carry on with your day. I love your videos. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's like, how it should be. And it's and it's somebody, it's not family, it's not friends. It's somebody that's watching my videos, enjoying the content. And I took it to heart. And that's actually one of those turning points where I stopped. And it was like, you're right. I need to find something that you're enjoying. I'm enjoying. We all get to enjoy together. And so that's one of the big reasons why I stopped was actually that criticism. It wasn't that I didn't want to keep going. He, you know, I was like, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'm going to take it to heart mm-hmm. and I'm going to develop to make myself better because you think I can do better, you know, and I think I can do better. So that's the big thing, right? If you feel like you can do better. Yeah. Then you're like, okay, Maybe there's some truth here. But if somebody says something and you're looking at it and you're like, what? This came out of left field. Then you kind of got to just brush it aside. Otherwise, it'll eat at you. Just let it go. Yeah. And that's the big thing, I got to say. Because, I mean. People don't do enough of it. Nope. And it just makes things a little bit more difficult. That's for sure. It definitely does. Life can be a hard place if you're, you know, just letting other people's opinions dictate you. Mm Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and that's one of the big things about, you know, why kids almost shouldn't have social media, right? I don't really get, dude, this whole cyberbullying thing because I'm always just like, put your put your phone down. You don't if you don't read it, then it's not happening. Then, yeah, then it but it doesn't exist. But right? at the same time, I mean, how much cyberbullying did we have? I felt like we caught the tail end of like actual bullying. Yes, like I mean, cyberbullying. Well, yeah, I mean, what is? Yeah, what is cyberbullying? Is that just bullying on the internet? Like, I got bullied in school. I've seen that before. I mean, that's something. That's real life, yeah. right? You can't just put How your much... phone away and have that. So, but that that's where it comes into our opinion, our mentality. That's we, a good point. We don't have that media like they do now. Yeah, I guess if you're on your phone constantly and you're getting that then and you're getting your phone be. sooner and you know how to work it already. Whereas we're getting on there when we first got phones at the age of 12 because we're thinking – Moving forward, you know, everybody else is getting one in junior high too, but they're not getting the same phones that we got. No. So how much do we really know about cyberbullying? Because as soon as they get a phone, it's a smartphone. That is that is a good point. So, That's a really good point. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, cyberbullying is a big concept and it is like super bad, but I'm also not saying it's like, it's not existent. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure there is. There's something to it. Yeah. And it's just being open to that idea of like, I don't understand. 
I really don't understand what cyberbullying is. I can say that. I have a lot of things like that that I just, sometimes you just look in the mirror and you're like, I do not understand this yeah. at all. Especially in today's day and age because there's mm-hmm. so many different things going on. It's and hard to. You get to hear everybody's little thing that they go through. Everybody's opinion. And as much as you want to stand or you like think you understand, you will you don't understand. You're not in their shoes or anything like that, you know, so. And it's crazy. It's it's just crazy. But it's crazy in that you you can't really work through an idea too, mm-hmm. right? So you might not understand something and be like, hey, can I, you know, can you give me some more information about this? And then people get mad. And they're like, you should just know. Mm. And it's like, okay, well, how, how do I, how am I supposed to know if nobody talks about it and nobody tells me about it well you should you should just know okay well does anybody just know how to do brain surgery no you have to learn it you You have to work through the develop it you got to figure it out questions you learn from other people other people talk to you about it you don't just know and with issues and stuff today especially most people don't know and so you're just telling them well you should just know Okay, well, let's talk about it. Let's mm-hmm. have a conversation. But nobody maybe... wants to talk about it. Nobody wants to nobody talk about it. They just want you to know. It. Yeah, you just got to know. And it's like, all right, let's hear each other's points. And then it's like, no, that's a bad thing. Like, yeah. That's your opinion and my opinion clashing together. We shouldn't do that. But yeah, that's how we're going to figure out where are we at this point? Like, why are we not understanding each other? Well, where's the disconnect? Yeah. Well, we're not talking about it. Yeah. You, know? you might know like, more about it than I do, or we might have various points that we know on and we're clashing it's like we were talking about with the news and everything like that where you're hearing news where i'm hearing news where whoever's hearing news it's all different it's all open to interpretation for one and it's all different people that we're watching and it's all swayed and it's got its own biases if you but we're supposed to trust the news yes you know Yes. It's like it's that's... America's newsroom. That's Fox's slogan, right? Mm-hmm. This is America's newsroom. Yeah. And CNN, I don't know what. I have no idea. Is. I just I told Fox you. one's too catchy. Yeah. yeah, and I just started looking at the news. To be honest with you, I've been living under a rock for a while. So, I I wonder if that's just an age thing because I've only recently really started getting into the news too. And I've talked well, to a few other friends, and they've all said the same thing. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just because we are in that slow age of the new media, you know, because we yeah. grew up on developing technology, and so everything was getting developed at the same time that we were understanding it. So as it's transitioning into Facebook, or you you either have your two different kinds of news. You got it from your mobile device, or you got it from your TV. So the TV is for like the older generation and mm-hmm. what they're figuring out. And then the mobile devices and everything through that kind of electronic aspect and everything is for the younger. So, you know, we're kind of in that middle of we were like, okay, do we watch TV or do we go over here and we do social media and everything? And it's just, I feel like we're kind of in the middle of that and we don't know which to go. Which way? Yeah. And there's not really a good way. No. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. You and I were talking about it. I was trying to get into the bbc because i thought i've constantly heard hey yeah this is you know Mm -hmm. you're trying to find some unbiased spot go to the bbc it's biased you know anything involving humans is going to be biased though that's just how it is that's just that's really just how it is they have their opinions whether they're the ones dictating what's getting reported or they're the ones that are reporting it themselves they antidote some sort of everybody brings in something some bias that they have it's just like acting you know you act a certain way whether it be fake acting or you're genuine how you're acting in front of somebody you Mm -hmm. know you constantly have that persona and it's just how you phrase it is how things are going to be taken and what your view is. And we can all see it. Yeah. You know, you're not going to fake us out. Yeah. We know. We know what you're saying. We know what you're meaning. Yeah. You You would just think, though, that with everything we have, all the power we have, all the different platforms, all the different ways you can dispense media, that there would be something that's at the lower end of biased, right? Or is that just a pipe dream that, we all need to realize isn't going to happen. I wouldn't say, I, I don't want to say that it's not going to happen. Cause it's kind of cynical to say that. Yeah. Right? Cause I would love to see that happen. Mm-hmm. I would love to have a world that is like that for my daughter and everything, but looking at it now, we're not there, you know? So yeah, maybe it's just a time thing. Maybe. Are you, how old do you think she's going to be before you let her have her phone? Oh, that's going to be a tough I don't one. Know. That's going to be a tough one. We argue about it all the time, not until she's 18 and can get it herself. Maybe Woo. when she's younger and, you know, things are developed. We don't know. Yeah. We really don't. There's not really a great answer. Mm-hmm. I mean. Yeah. I couldn't imagine trying to figure this out. 
and she's only one. You got plenty of time yeah. to get there. It's like we talk about it now, but it's definitely plenty of time and everything. Yep. So I'm going to make you do a timeout again because I drank that coffee way <laughs> too fast. Well, here. actually, we can. We've done two hours, man. We can. Really? Yeah, Whoa. we can wrap this sucker up. All right. Well, time flies, I mean, right? Yeah. It's, I mean, when you have fun and you're having a conversation, you it know, just, it's just go. If you're in it, it, you're in it. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, thank you for Dude, thank you for coming on here. This it's, is awesome. Yeah, I had a great like time said, talking to you. Listen to the podcast. It's Motivate Me. And for anybody that is listening, maybe a video is going to come out soon. I don't know yet, but. Yeah. I'm hoping. Okay, man. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You want to plug your social media so people can find the vlogs and stuff? Uh, so if you want to go ahead and look at Facebook, it's Austin's Family Vlogs. You can find it through my channel. I post a lot. And then if you go on Twitter, it's at Vlog Austin. So All capital right. V and capital A. Okay. All right. Thanks so much for coming on, man. I had a great time. Yeah, I did too. Thank you very much. All right. Take it easy, brother. Hey, you too.